Hey, hey, hey. All right. Let's uh, get her going. Thanks for uh, stopping by the uh, live chat after the short review. Um, if you don't have a lot of time to hang around with this uh, for a couple hours, which I understand, then uh, check out the short review. Uh, I'll have it on the side, uh, viewable and uh, searchable. We took a look at uh, the Glendronic 12, and this is what I'll be uh, getting into with uh, Malt here. Let me make sure I get his link ready to go so I can uh, give him an old, an old invite here on the side. One second. We're uh, also waiting for a couple people to stop by here. And uh, there we go. Hopefully, you guys are having a good uh, Tuesday, Tasty Tuesday. Thanks so much for uh, hanging out with Malt and I on this one. This is a... We thought about, you know, we were talking about the show and what would it, you know, what would be good for everybody across the board. Hey, Juan, good to see you, man. Um, and uh, we thought that we might change it up a little bit, but not too much, uh, but try to be consistent where we have a more accessible, easier to find scotch. Uh, we'll try to keep it like around 80 or less for the first hour and then go all out and do whatever we feel like for the second hour, which tonight we're going to do a Port Charlotte MRC01, which is a specialty dram, but you can still get it out there. You can still get anything. I mean, sometimes it, it does cost a lot on the secondary market, but uh, typically if you play your cards right or, or knowing, you know, some people that do like to do what we do, um, you could always do like a trade or, you know, some sort of uh, find, a, you know, get help finding a deal somewhere else, maybe uh, locally or even online. You never know. Hey, Snick, first time. Um, whose first time is it? I know it's not your first time, Snick. <laughs> if you're asking me if it's my first time having the Glendronic, no, it's not. But it has been quite a while. And Dram, good to see you, man. I was hoping you stopped stop by. You can definitely help us uh, out on the... Uh, Trying, you know, bringing back the classics. I was just telling the guys that we're going to try to keep it where we had the first hour is going to be a more accessible dram. Try to keep it under 80, no matter what it is, if we can help it. And then for the second hour, go into something a little more crazy, if you want to use that word. <laughs> uh, hopefully you're not still at work there, Dram. Hopefully you're uh, at home. If you uh, are still at work, hopefully you can sneak a little, a little uh, sample or something. <laughs> Oh, interested to hear how this might be different from older batches. Uh, yeah, this is another good reason to, to come back, circle around, and uh, do this. Because, and I'll give a kind of a preface while we wait for Malt to wrap things up on the other side. Um, this used to be... Uh, it was pre Brown Foreman. Think of that. Brown Foreman is the newer uh, company that runs the show for Glentronic. And uh, this also uh, includes, uh, I think, our friend Rachel Berry is also involved with the master blending of. Uh, of Glentronic as well uh, when she left Bowmore and went over to, Glen, to the Brown Foreman uh, to do Glendronic and uh, they do other things too, but we'll just focus on this for now. But um, th there was like the old revival, the new revival, that's the 15 year old. Uh, there are differences. It will be interesting to see like if, if we've lost the quality, um, hopefully not. Um, you know, it, this is one of those drams that's such a glorious one that it'd be a shame for it to, you know, go downhill. I, I don't want to see that happen. Hopefully to God at night. <laughs> Working at home. Oh, okay. Well, not lucky for you, but hopefully uh, you can sneak a little sip in on the side. Hey, dropping in to like and shout. <laughs> okay. Nice to see you, Emily. I remember uh, you came over from Maltz last time, I think. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Hey, Malt Muse are happy. I just ended next. Excited to be here. Okay, I told you all about the new format. Cool. Uh, you let us know a few days before the day. I just happened to look for a glue. 2012 to compare to the 18, but I had known I would have gone for a few other places. It's okay. I know how it goes. Uh, we This, unfortunately, was a last-minute decision. We... Um, we we were trying to, to do something like this, but 
none of us had a lot of like just 12 year olds hand well he he had a couple and i really didn't have anything on hand so i, I was like well what do you have in, you know right now where i can just go grab a bottle of something that would make sense to do for this and uh he gave me like four or five different options and i thought this would be the best because out of my whiskey journey this is the the 12 year old that definitely sticks out among a bunch it's it's pretty crazy extremely busy lately yeah oh man that's not good hopefully it, it winds down a little bit for you i know how you feel though with the uh yes glorious it's going to be glorious hey andrew good to see you man looking forward to learning about the uh electronic in the port charlotte that's going to be really fun too sorry about that lucky to have work that's true that's the way i feel too man it's like I, I don't even want to, well, you can't, you almost have to stop and think, but you don't want to really want to think about all the people that are still having issues with all this uh, COVID-19 insanity going on. I feel bad for them and hopefully they can find a way. Hey, good to see you there, Stephen Connor. I was hoping you'd turn up for uh, one of these to see what you thought too on the old classic. Risky friend, good to see you. Yeah, I think this might help out. Kill her in 12. We'll have to take a look at that. That's definitely on the radar. Hey, Moose, good to see you, man. Oh, wow. Four out of five on the 12. You're the nicest creator ever. <laughs> I knew you would say that, Dustin. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. Come on. Good to see you. And there's our buddy. Let's see if I can snag him in here. <laughs> hey, <up>? man. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh-oh. <laughs> How's it going? You, you, you turn that way. <laughs> How's it going, man? Oh, it's going, man. Oh, Lordy. <laughs> Allergies are getting a little crazy. Oh, I was hoping it wasn't something like the yeah. rhino virus. <laughs> How are you, man? Yeah, well, hopefully you get that. What's up, buddy? How are you? I'm pretty good. I was just uh, chatting with them, and it looks like you gave them a heads up of what was to come with the uh, – the 12 in the uh, Glendronic 12 in the uh, Port Charlotte in uh, the switcheroo with trying to do a little more accessible stuff in the first and then the, the little yeah, more aware yeah, stuff. Definitely, yeah. Um, yeah, I was talking a little bit on the show and then we're going to do the uh, Glendronic 12 original and then the uh, Port Charlotte MRC01 in the second hour. It's going to be awesome. So we got a new one, uh, Molasses. Good to meet you. I don't think I've seen you before. And you're doing a virtual whiskey pro, uh, whiskey pub crawl. That's awesome. And oh, Eric is a good yeah. panel too. I like Eric a lot. That's me. <laughs> and we were just chatting. Yeah, things were swinging on over molasses. Oh wow, man, they're they're going crazy already. The uh, yeah, it was funny. I was talking. I was telling them that uh, we didn't really. It was funny because a lot of people were trying to get this as well. And the good thing is, we'll be able to give you guys more of a heads up of what's to come. This yeah. was kind of like something we just chatted about really recently, and we were trying to f go ahead and do like a more accessible cool. one with something like a Port Charlotte uh, MRC01. Mm -hmm. And we thought uh, he already had one of these, and I thought, well, I could probably easily pick one up on the side. And this is like a no-brainer, you know, usually. I haven't had it in a while, but uh, typically it runs pretty good and not too expensive, about 65 for a 12-year-old. You know, yeah. it's on the higher side, but it's not like going to blow your socks off money-wise. No, it's not bad. I mean, it's a little more expensive, and I was saying this, like a little more expensive than like your, you know, Glenn Farquhar's 12 or, uh, you know, there's a couple other kind of La Santa, Glenmorgan La Santa. Um, but 46% non chill natural, or I'm sorry, 43%. I got that wrong. So one thing I wanted to ask you, Telex, before you uh, before we get into this, do you see the laser date stamp on yours? I'd be curious. Uh, mine's 2019, so this is definitely just 12. But um, Yeah, mine is as well. Mine's a 20. Uh, that's the first thing I did was I, I popped it open, and I looked at the code, and it said... Yeah. It's a uh, 14, let's see, 2019, 05, 14. So May the 14th, 2019. Huh. Funny you say that, man. Mine is, yeah, mine is 05, 13. Isn't that funny <laughs> how close they are? They're literally as close as they get, so. I'm what? glad you didn't pull out like an old pre found Brown Foreman bottle, though that's a good thing that you didn't get a different year, so. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely, man. 
Um, yeah, we can get into them in a sec, but uh, what's been up with you, man? What, um, have you got yourself anything new recently? I have – well, I've been working out, like, some deals on the side, and I've kind of – I told you kind of a little bit about it. I've got a couple uh, good options coming down the pike. Uh, thankfully, both uh, Malt and I have the new Carriages 2020 coming, and I have it here on hand, and Malt thought he might get it today, and we were going to do it, but it didn't come. Wow. But hopefully by the next show, the Carriages 2020 will be a definite one that we can go ahead and do with you guys. Um the I did get my hands on the Tamdu 15, which I'm eager to get out to you, as well as the limited release of the Ardbeg Black, not the committee, but the limited one. Yeah, uh, which I've actually heard it might even be better, believe it or not. So we'll, we'll have to see about that. Um, and I've been I've got an Altmore 21 on hold for me, and also a Kilholman Ambrach, which is going to be it's the mess. Uh, they basically messed up and have uh, some ported whiskey with some peated whiskey. It was really crazy. Um, but that one is actually going to be coming, I think, the end of this week or, or next week. So those two will be on hand with those other. Those will be like the next four that I ship to to uh, Eric, I think, at this point. Yeah, man. I mean, I think, like, we got a lot of exciting stuff coming, man. We've uh, We've been taking your all's advice. We've been thinking through this. The show's been continuing to evolve, and um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have a whole bunch of fun stuff coming. I think I got a good amount of samples coming your way, um, and uh, you know we're gonna keep trying to do stuff that's revisiting some classics and uh, and uh, trying some stuff that's a little more out there. So hopefully, there's a little bit for everybody, and you know it's all about increasing uh, increasing the uh, conversation and everybody learning from everybody and. It'll all be a lot of fun, man. So I'm looking forward to it. And give us some give us some ideas as far as like what accessible whiskeys would you like to see us take a look at? Uh, I know the Glengarry 12 was one that was oh, mentioned yeah. before. I love the Glengarry 12. Yeah, I'll that's see if I can find it. That's a that's not easy to find, but I'll see if I can find the 12. I'd really love to find the 15, but that one's really tough to find. <laughs> yeah. But a Glengarry 12 would be a good a good entry, like one accessible one to get if we can find it. Uh, but think, I mean, think of anything. I, I may, I'm even talking like McAllen 12 is one that was on the radar. A lot of people like that. Well, yeah, that would be interesting. I don't remember the last time I had one of those. So they have like the Sherry Oak and then the double cask, right? I would mistaken. stick to the Sherry probably if it was me, <laughs> unless you really wanted to do an Oaky or one, but... I tend to like the sherry ones more than the uh, straightforward oaky woody ones, but I'm I'm up for anything at this point. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you on that. All right, man. Talisker uh, Tim, that sounds good too. But yeah, let us know uh, what you guys think as far as what we should try. That could be fun. Um, Not for you. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Well, we'll see. Right? It's been a little while. We could we could put that in the last uh, the last of the accessible ones. Yeah, yeah. Well, my review coming out Friday is Talisker eighteen, and and as somebody who is not a big Talisker fan, uh, uh, y'all might be in for a little bit of surprise on what I thought about that one. Awesome. Um. Anyways, so should we get into the Glendronic? Yeah, man. Go ahead and uh... let's set the table here. So, Glendronic twelve years old. This is what would be widely considered their introductory range whiskey. Um, this is, uh, again, 12 years. It is Pedro Jimenez and Oloroso Sherry. So really what you're getting is like Pedro Jimenez tends to be sweeter. Oloroso is kind of more drier dark fruits. So it's a fully sherried whiskey. It is 43% ABV, non-chill and natural colored. I love that too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you got to appreciate that, right? Um, especially at 43%, sometimes you don't find the non-chill factor there just because you know, we don't got to get into the details, but usually, you know, the ABV thing or whatever. Um, and yeah, you know, so Glendronic is considered, I believe, a Highland malt, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. It, it, and, stuff. and it doesn't even taste like a Highland. It's more like a space side to me in the profile, you know, because Highlands typically are more floral, but this one is a great Highland. <laughs> yeah. No, that's helpful context, um, you know, kind of distinguishing. So like the region stuff is debatable in terms of like it was a marketing thing but it also has you know there's some somewhat similarity i don't know if you want to elaborate it all on that telex but um you know it's 
take it for what it's worth. I'll put it that way. Yeah, I mean, typically you've got your your Islas, which are typically peated, but there are some great non-peated distilleries like Bunahaven out there that put out both peated and non-peated offerings. So you can't, you could take it with a grain of salt. Campbelltown has the nice funkiness uh, in the background. There's only a few distilleries though that do Campbelltown. Lowlands are really like, typically, and there's, Bladnock will fool you because they have some great fruit, but uh, they're usually on the lighter and even triple distilled like an Akintoshin. Um, you've, you've got your Highlands like we talked about. Space sides are more fruity. Um, and finally, islands are more uh, brinier, typically, like a talisker, and more spicy, like uh, with pepper and white pepper. White yep. pepper. That kind of rounds it up, like the the typical stuff. But there's so many exceptions to the rule. It's kind of like speaking or learning English. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Totally. Um, and so the other thing that I think is of note about this 12 year old original is the fact that it's it's non chill filtered, right? Um, I know, Telex, do you want to share a little bit about like chill filtration and like why non-chill filtration is usually something to folks should look out for and why it's a, a good thing to go for the non-chill filtered whiskeys? Well, I mean, the only thing I really know is that, um, and it is debated where, and you could bring up the, the, the PPM thing being a debatable thing too, but the, the coloring and the chill filtering most people will admit that it does affect the taste and if you put a ton of coloring in there even though you're not thinking you're affecting it you really can affect the, the taste and with the chill for the filtration it it does it, it makes it cloudy when you add water but to me that's not a bad thing to get to remove the cloudiness and the murkiness they used to do typically a chill filtration thing where it made the whiskey stay the same as far as the the clarity of it but right. to me though i prefer things and this is and this is really with anything food related you really want it to be all natural as much as you can get it and i think that's where we come from our whiskey too right i mean yeah the, the yeah, PPM thing is say again yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. The PPM thing is the peat. I do notice a difference with the higher PPM on the peat level. I don't think it affects the smokiness of a whiskey as much. Agreed. But the, the peat bite, like the effervescence of a whiskey, I think if it is like one of those higher than 40 PPMs, which are, you know, typically our bigs and Lafroigs are 40 and 30, if they're above that, like your Port Charlottes or your Brook Lotties, whatever, Octomores, that's when you get that real heavy bite on the palate to me at least right yeah totally i mean and just to add uh kind of build on that like yeah basically i think the chill filtration thing is i think it's pretty obvious that chill filtration changes at least the presentation or the the, the experience with it it strips out some of the fatty acids which have a lot of like flavor and gives you some more about mouthfeel specifically like the esters as it's called if you get into like the specifics of it. The coloring thing is like Scotch whiskey allows you to add E150A, of course, which is to try to get like consistency in presentation. But there are, I think with color, it's, I personally can't say I've ever really noticed, but some people say, you know, they can definitely tell adding color has had anything to it. But this uh, Glendronic 12 is a non-chill filtered natural. So that's uh, all pluses and not something you often uh, uh, see quite frequently in a younger whiskey. So. I'm going to take the cap off this and um, shall we dive in? Oh, yeah. Two big pluses on the NCF and the NC, I like to call it. Non chill yeah. filter, non color. That's the first thing I'll, I'll, I think Aquavite has a good point with this. It's like the first four things I look at is the ABV, the year, the chill filtering, and the coloring. That's That yep. pretty much will sum up if it's going to be a, a great ride or a so so ride, usually. <laughs> totally. But don't let it, I mean, if it is chill filtered in color, don't let it like completely turn you off. Because I've had some decent flora and fauna bottles I've, I've done in the past where I'm like yeah. surprised by how actually how good they actually still are, even being at a, you know, a lower ABV and coloring and chill filtering and all that. There still can be some gems. So. Right. So I noticed Alan, the whiskey friend, is a big fan of this Bundronic 12 and says it's one of the best 12 year olds. So. Here we go. <sighs> so my, you want to go first on the nose, or I can? Um, it's it, it's up to you either way. I, I don't mind. Sure, I'll dive in. All right. 
So immediately on the nose for something like this, there's a little bit of a sharpness, which may be you know slight alcohol, slight youthiness. Uh, but majority for me, it's like creamy vanilla, and then a lot of like rich red fruits, and they're very bright and they're very in your face. They're very loud, which is again, if this is a younger whiskey. I mean, I want to say it's like it's a bit of raspberry. It's a bit of red apple. It's a bit of, there's a little bit of a mint thing going on too, but it's like vanilla, bright kind of juicy red fruit and uh, a slight kind of either it's alcohol astringency or mint. I think you're onto something there because I, I do have a I have an herb, but a different herb. But I, I I think I know what you're talking about there. There's a little bit of there's a little bit of a a, a spiciness to it too, and I want to say it's like ginger nutmeg kind of thing, just kind of a nice kind of robust, sharp, slightly slightly tan, uh, uh, almost almost uh, citric. This is why I love doing these because you get like a note and I, I, and as soon as you said ginger, I'm like, oh, he's right. There's like actually a lot of ginger on the nose here. And I didn't even get that on my first go around. <laughs> yeah. It's a little bit of ginger. It's, it's, it's kind of masked over by what I think is that kind of vanilla and it, you know, almost maybe like a toffee note too. Yeah. For me, it's like the first thing, it, it was like a one, two punch. The first punch I got was a citrusy punch, like a orange lemon thing, but it was very short. And then right after that's where I got the same fruit explosion of deep reds, like the uh, currants and strawberries and yeah, currants. Yeah. Some dark spices are in there. And I couldn't determine if it was like a peppery or a cinnamon type, but I think nutmeg is the best. Uh, you, you nailed it with the nutmeg. I, I didn't, clarify that but i did get like a basil note which i think is the same as your mint it's like a like an herbal okay. kind of note a little more rounded right yeah, yeah. Not, it's not quite basil for me but i sort of see what you're saying a little bit of tobacco of even but no smoke i don't get smoke but i do get like a hint of tobacco on the on the end too mm. like a tea bag tobacco combination interesting yeah all in all, like quite pleasant on the nose. I mean, it's not super complex, but like it's got a couple of really loud notes and quite inviting. Yeah, I mean, it, it all goes together for me. I, I love the nose on this one. Yeah. It's like, uh, you know, some folks describe these whiskeys as like Christmas Christmas spices. I think that's here, but it's, it's a little bit more, it's a little flatter and a little sweeter than I, it doesn't have that depth and robustness of like Christmas fight, but it's there. Yeah, if they focus just on if they focus just on Oloroso sherry and not PX, they probably would have got what you're describing with the mm -hmm. Christmas factor. But I think since they injected the PX to the equation, it definitely brings a lot more of the sweetness um, that cancels it out or something. <laughs> Love that palette, man. It's got a lot of toffee vanilla dark more dark fruits a little bit of milk chocolate and it's a glorious heavy mouth coat i mean it's it's almost cleanly heavy level to me um a little bit of oaky properties with dry grapes and black pepper on the side too i'm with you on that i think everything that you just said is nail on the head for a whiskey that's Completely aged in sherry. Well, two different sherries, but sherry nonetheless. There are surprisingly a lot of what I guess I would characterize as more traditional bourbon notes in this. It's It's got a nice core center of like dark caramel, toffee, and then these, again, rich, dark red fruits. They're pretty loud. The development is relatively eh, short, short, medium, maybe medium. Um, goes into a decent finish. It's a little bit sharp in that it's got, again, that kind of, it's not alcohol astringency, but it's close to there. It's a little bit like, maybe it's that, ginger. It, it's not quite dark ginger either, but it's more like an alcohol note. I think that there's, I really think what's interesting about this whiskey is because of its, it, despite its sheriness is, is the, like I was saying, the amount of like dark, well, the amount of more like bourbon cast notes. Um, you nailed it with 
that, that, like on the finish, I got more of like the the the, the, the uh, dark chocolate with like um, a bit of the caramel and toffee and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's that's you know that with the it's got a bourbon. Ooh, my God, sweet. It's got like a three prong thing. It's got the bourbon, the PX, and the Oloroso nicely all together balanced. I think. Hmm. Yeah, this it's a little bit beguiling in that way. Uh, not quite what I expected, but at the same time, um, you know, media uh, short medium on the finish, maybe. Um, it does drop off quite a bit. I mean, this is only a 12 year, so it's not an extended development, but I think you're left with like, again, uh, I get a spearmint, a kind of a menthol coolness. There, there's those, the, the sherry notes and the, well, the PX shows up more on the finish where you're left with that kind of sweetness, almost like a tart sweetness, not tart. I should take that back. It's more of like a, like a tangy sweetness, not tart. Um, you know, it's youthful, it's vibrant, it's pretty loud, it's got a couple notes going for it, but it's, you know, pretty tasty. I get a lot of leather and cinnamon on the finish, too, with, mm. uh, it's it's weird, like, the first time I had it, I was like you, I, I thought it was a bit short to medium, and then after a couple more sips, and let it kind of settle, it went to more medium to long, it, 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 it definitely is one of those that takes... A few drams to really, I think, get it to last longer. I don't know if, if it's just because I've had a lot of it to drink tonight, but <laughs> it's it's it, it's got like a ginger snap kind of feel at the end to me. It's, it's yeah, no, I'm with you on that. There's it's like baking spices. I'm gonna add a couple of drops to see if. Uh... I have to tell you, like um, this has got it. I think the most interesting thing that I'm picking up on this is really the how kind of bourbony it is, despite being all Oloroso PX. I'm not entirely sure why. I could, I mean, I could be mistaken, but it doesn't. I mean, it literally says on here, matured in the finest Pedro Jimenez and Oloroso Sherry. I, there really are some kind of nice bourbon notes. And maybe that's, I'm just chalking that up to like, I'm mischaracterizing the barley or something, but quite interesting. But boy, I mean, you know, it's, I mean, that isn't to say that it's not a sherry whiskey because it is definitely a sherry whiskey. I'm, I guess I'm just a little bit surprised. Now, I know that as far as the core range of Glendronic goes, when you look at the 12, 15, 18, 21, they're all PX Oloroso marriages with the exception of the Allardyce, which is all just Oloroso. Um, yeah, right? I mean, decent good color, yeah. For a twelve-year-old uh, with with the sherry, I'm not surprised, but uh, I'm so glad it's natural. With the, I added a couple of drops, and uh, the nose it brings out more confection sugar, like a uh, pixie sticks. Yeah, powdered sugar. Yeah, totally. The sweetness. It's that PX. It really comes through here. I think a couple of drops of water brings out like uh, some honeys and some medium florals on the nose too. Huh. Oh, wow. It also brings out a little bit more hazelnuts and figs, dates, and almonds on the uh, palate. A little nuttier. Hmm. Yeah. Um, hmm. There is there is a real, like, core to this whiskey, which I do just, like, I just can't shake, which is very much like Caramel, I'm not brown sugar, but close. Yeah, it's caramel and vanilla, like which is what I would normally say are the kind of things you get off bourbon. Um, very true. It's interesting how they kind of balance with the sherry here. What I like with the water for the finish too is it brings out waxiness. It doesn't, it doesn't take away from the medium to heavy mouth coat, but it's like. Um, it gets a little waxy, it, and that ginger snap thing is still going on. It's very nicely balanced with the savory side and the sweet side to me. It's not 
too much one way or another. Like the long morns usually tend to be overly savory and like your McAllen's and some of your um, others are, are, if they're heavy on the PX side, they're, they're too sweet. So this one to me is like in, in, in malts dead on with the, 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 the trifecta basically of the bourbon notes, the PX notes and the Oloroso Sherry, I think is what really makes this shine. As a yeah, I, I'm, I mean, I'm quite enjoying it. And so after having these tastings, you know, we're, we're talking about a whiskey here that it's entry level, but it's also a little bit pricier on the entry level scale, right? I mean, like this is not, you know, this is a $60, $65 whiskey in comparison to sometimes where like, you know, you can get some sherried whiskeys. You think on Farkless, as I was mentioning earlier, you know, Highland Park 12, uh, McAllen 12, which is like in the same price range. Um, it would be fun to compare the two, but you know, as a 12 year old whiskey. Yeah. Like, what, what, what would you, curious to hear kind of where you landed on it. What would you get? Uh, I, I, I was torn. The first time I tried this, I only gave it, and it's funny, Dustin's going to laugh. I gave it a 3.5 when I first had it like a three years ago. And I was like, you know, floored by it being great. But I thought, well, surely this is not, you know, I can't grade it like a four because it's not going to be as good as some 15s, 18s, 21s and stuff. But well, to, yeah. me, to me, and I, and I want to hear Dustin's uh, comeback because I know he was surprised. I, uh, I give it a four out of five. I think it's a, one of the best 12-year-old whiskeys next to maybe Bunahav in 12. And I mean, the Lagavulin 12 is, is a specialty because that's a cast strength, but right. like uh, Spring Bank 12, yeah. Yeah, but like a Spring Bank 12 cast, I mean, that's cast strength as well. But like, if you, for your run of the mill 12 year olds that are not specialty, that are 43%, I can't really think of much that would beat this guy. I mean, let me ask you a question. Yeah. How would you now, this is a, it's comparing it to a non sherry, but last week we talked about the Balvenie single barrel 12 year old. In terms of like, you know, you pay 10 bucks more for the Balvenie, maybe. How would you think this ranks up against something like that? I think the Balvenie is, the, that 12 uh, year old single barrel is solid, but I think it depends on the audience. Like if, if for me, for me being more of a sherry head than a true straightforward bourbon head, oh. I'm going to go for this one a little, I mean, I'm talking minuscule difference though, oh. as far as cool. quality. Cool. I think the, that Balvany 12 single barrel, if I was a bourbon guy and not so much a sherry guy, I would be all over that Balvany like like crazy, man. That, that, that stuff was yeah. really good. And I appreciate a good bourbon, uh, ex-bourbon cask as well. I mean, is anybody? Yeah, else? no. I mean, I think you're, I like, I think, uh, so you 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 went four out of five on this one. That that's the way I felt about it. Thinking, let, yeah. me, see what, let me see what Dustin says here. If you're not grading by price, giving something a, a four and saying not, mm. yeah, I don't I don't put I, I'm not grading due to value. I'm just grading this as a standalone twelve year old whiskey against other whiskey and i've had many many 12 year olds to me i'm you know, I, you might not feel the same but i've had a boatload i'm talking hundreds of 12 year olds that can't hold a candle to this one and yeah. that's why this one to me is a four out of five when you're comparing i'm comparing to 200 and i forgot the count but it was like almost 200 distilleries you know of different 12 year olds yeah. i've had i've had just about yeah, every a lot of feedback coming in uh from folks on on this one, I think I just saw a Whiskey Friend and Donner Pass. You're bang on, fellow. There is none better. Yeah, I mean that's, it's really it's really tough to uh, to find. Uh, I, I, that's the challenge. I mean, find us a better twelve year old than this one, and that's the one we'll 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 do next uh, time if we get a chance, or maybe maybe down the road we'll do it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, my 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 final thing on this is like, I don't think I'm gonna I would go quite as high as you, but I think that the price. I look, I think supporting a whiskey that's non chill natural, even at this age, at this younger age, is good. Um, it does have an age statement, which I think is always good and at signaling to you. I'm uh, I'm in the three two five to three five range. 
And that's the another reason people get a bottle of this or try it if they find it at a really good price. Um, I think so. Just as a point of comparison, I think the Balvenie single barrel that we did last week, which I think is a 4.0, and the reason I give it that is because while it is a little bit more expensive, I think there's it's got a longer development and a longer finish. But I think, I think. Yeah, I think this is in that three, uh, you know, if I had to come up with a preliminary score, and again, like I'm, I'll am i do a robust review of this eventually. Um, I think for me, this is a, yeah, I think it's a three, five. I mean, I, I think it's, I think it falls, I think it's better than the average 12 for the most part. Um, I don't think it's like necessarily anything to write home about, but I think for, for somebody getting into scotch, and just trying sherried whiskeys for the first time and wants a good quality whiskey that's above 40%, it's not chill, natural. I mean, you could do far worse than this. I think this blows the Glen Farklets out of the water. And that's the thing. I mean, the reason I why I, I, I think that's, I think I'll fall in the three and the three, five range on this. And the reason why I think this is a four is because think about the Abelara 12 guys. Think about the Abelara oh, 12. Yeah, right. <laughs> think about, think about the McAllen 12. And I know I, I was looking at what Dustin was, uh, one second. Dustin was saying that he would prefer the McAllen 12. I think the McAllen 12 is okay, but to me, it's a lot less complex I mean, because yeah. this one has the savory notes and the sweet notes the mckellen 12 to me is more just straightforward sweetness it's it's it All doesn't have a lot of maybe we need to do a little uh taste test of that in a couple of weeks man to me it's it's more straight it, it's not a px probably but it, it tastes like a px to me straightforward i'll agree with you kill karen 12 is one of the best 12 years out there the Balvenie double at 12, I do not like at all. And and that is like, to me, like a two, that's like a 2.5 out of five, uh, the Balvenie double at 12. I am not a fan. I do agree with you in the Springbank 12, but keep in mind, that's a cast strength whiskey. It's not in the same caliber ABV wise as the ones that we're talking about here. So I'll, the only thing I'll agree with you on this one is the Kilcarran 12, uh, I do like the Springbank 12, but I wouldn't even in the in Lagavulin is the same. It's cast strength. It's not even. It's not in the same uh, price range that we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm kind of like, eh, you know, DHS thinks that the McKellen 12 is way better. Are you talking about the Sherry Oak or the Double Oak? That that does make a big. Yeah, difference. I'm not sure. I, I actually haven't had. I, I don't remember which one of those I had, so I'm not really sure. I have a feeling that he's going to say the not the sherry, but the uh, but the uh, the the woody one, the double oak, whatever. See, and that's the thing. I think that's the difference between Dustin and I. He loves obviously that he loves woody whiskey because he also likes the uh, double wood twelve. I do not like overly oaky property whiskey. It's just uh, it's just not for me. Oh, Sherry Oak for sure. Pass on Double Oak. Okay. Well, I guess we do agree on that. But huh. the, the Buna Haven 12, yeah. I'll agree with you, is, is – That's is, a 4 out of 5 for me. The Buna 12 is a 4 out of 5. And that's also a 4 out of 5, most likely. I need to have it again at some point. But but this one, to me, is as good as the Buna Haven 12. That's just that's just the okay. way I see it. Yeah, right on, man. Because um, I'm a Sherry head. I'm not a bourbon guy like you guys are. That's the that's kind of the main difference. I think that's the reason why you like the Balvenie so much more. I mean, I like it, and I think it's like the Balvenie I would put right here and the Glentronic I put like barely above it. <laughs> I mean, and like at the end of the day, this is all subjective to some degree, and like scores are just, you know, at the end of the day, what they are. But I think that like if you're – you know, I, as I always say, like, I try to put money into consideration. And for me, like, I, I look at this and I say, three years ago when I was uh, getting into scotch or whatever it was, five years ago, I don't remember. And I want to try a Sherry Bomb and I tried the Dalmore, I tried this, I tried that. And like, yeah, I think this one is better. I mean, it doesn't, I, I, I appreciate how much it lights the world on fire for you and like, hearing the the praise and the and the notes that you're getting out of it i'm totally here I, you know that's great um and i think that like it's for me it's just if this was 45 50 bucks i'd probably bump it up to a 3.25 or a 3.5 but like i for me like it's it's right in there i think this is a quality dram i think it's a great way for folks who are like getting into sherry matured scotch 
for Sherry influence Scotch for that matter to like get a sense of like what Sherry brings to the profile. Yeah, I think it's totally there. Um, totally quality whiskey. I wouldn't sneeze at it. I'm not sure I'm going to run out and buy it if it's 70 bucks, but if it's 50, yeah, I mean, totally worth it. So well, take, take this to heed folks. Uh, uh, for those of you who are like, you know, just kind of getting into your whiskey journey or in your sherry journey for that matter, keep your eyes out for this one. Um, I think it's a good pour. And plus you get the non-chill natural, which is like something you don't find as much uh, on the younger whiskey stuff. So. For me, though, I have to disagree. Like on, on this one with the uh, with Dustin, I know he was saying that he thinks it sucks for a straight whiskey, but uh, oh, okay. I just I I would not say this sucks by any means. I think it's one of the better sherry drams if you compare it to most of the well known ones. It's just it is subjective to to an extent, I think, in some level. But uh, yeah, sometimes you just have to, have to agree to disagree, I guess, on that one. But it, to me, you'll never see this below sixty bucks because this is well worth above fifty dollars to me i was that he found it for 40 by him i mean that's a killer price that is a killer price and i would jump all day for forty dollars for this to me this being 55 to 60 65 being being like teetering toward the higher end i think is a, a great price for it i wouldn't change it once you get past like 70 though that's when i would draw the line and not not even go sure. there sure. yeah 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 Someone said something here. Let me go back up one second. I missed something with uh, uh, Stephen asked if you compared the twelve. I guess Billy was the old um, master blender, and Rachel being the new one. Tell me, there's not a difference, and that's something I wish that I could try. When I've got my first brown. Um, Foreman bottle, and this was like even three or four years ago. She already was was on board, so I didn't get a chance to try the old old version. But what I've noticed by a lot of whiskey, uh, and I think this has to do with a lot of people that don't like some of this newer stuff, is it's always best when it's first released. <laughs> so typically, when, you know, you, you go downhill with you know more releases and more time and all that. But I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, and so the other thing I was thinking about is like, when you think about other 12 year old sherry whiskeys, and we're talking about like, you're just getting into exploring sherry whiskeys. Obviously, the uh, the Glendronic 12 is high on your list. Like, what other ones would you compare it to? Or do you think there are other ones that are worth trying that are not necessarily, um, you know, maybe as good or like comparable? Like, are there other 12 year old Kind of maybe even less, and we can even go ten, right? Twelve year old or less kind of sherry scotches that that you would recommend uh, to folks who are maybe looking to try it. To me, the only like if you're talking quality dram, the only ones that comes close to this one to me is the Kilcarran Twelve, the Bunahaven Twelve, um, the Deanston Ten PX. I'll, I actually do like. Um, but see, that's, a, that's another difference between me and some of these other guys like Steven. Steven's not a big PX fan. I, I like PX and sometimes even prefer it more than Oloroso, depending on how it's done. So that that's a big factor, I think, in all this as well when you're talking about sh even just the sherry stuff. I think this kicks the shit out of any Abelauer you'd ever put in front of me. And, I agree on that. <laughs> and even some McAllen's. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm not saying McAllen's are bad. I've had some great McAllen whiskey before, but to me, they're 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 12 year old. It just doesn't have the the savory, heavy mouth coat robustness that this one has. And uh, and that's the thing. I mean, if you don't mind a thinner whiskey, like if you're a big Glengoin fan, then you won't agree with me. But if you like to stick stick towards the waxy oily whiskey like i do then that's also another factor to it yeah i'm gonna actually pour myself a little bit more of this man because you know what i'm kind of enjoying it <laughs> it is damn good i'm gonna have you, man i hope you guys all enjoyed our like uh tasting of the glendronic 12 and do let us know in the chat if you've had it if you agree disagree indifferent to it uh other 12 year old sherry whiskeys that may be uh uh, things that you enjoy and would recommend. Um, we've heard some talk about the McAllen. 
I will be happy to, uh, and I'm sure Telex will too, to you know continue looking for some of the more intro stuff that we can uh, sample on the show. But this was a fun tasting, man. Yeah, Steve, Steve, sorry about that. Yeah, I mean, he does like PX, but he does enjoy the Oloroso notes more. So it's kind of one of those kind of side things. But it's just, it's not just that. It's the thinness of a whiskey makes a big difference to me. The the craft of the whiskey, is it chill filtered? Is it colored? I mean, there's lots and lots of things that go in, you know. I'm not the, nice body to it, man. I guess. He should know. I'm not the I'm not the biggest fan of Rachel Berry. I, I, I mean, the, the Ben Reich 21. I mean, for, those who, uh, for, for folks who are new to this, can you explain the Rachel Berry thing? Well, I mean, she came from Bowmore, which is notoriously really thin and not the best. And a lot of people say if you're going to get a Bowmore, get an independent bottling, which I'm not going to disagree with. That is true. Uh, she was with them for a while. She came over to Brown Foreman, which does uh, Glendronic. And I'm, I'm sure there's other distilleries I'm not thinking of, but the main one is Glendronic that she's involved with now. And the funny thing is, I'm not saying that she doesn't do things incorrectly sometimes, but when she came over to Glendronic, the revival didn't die. The revival didn't plummet with reviews and scores as this one that I'm aware of. I don't think it took a nosedive, but maybe it did. Maybe the, and I, I'm not blessed to have the quality of an old, old 12, you know, uh, from 10 years ago, but is it really that different? I guess is the word I'm looking for. <laughs> sure. Sure. And it very well could be. Cause I mean, I, I will say that I have been, su been surprised by having an old Yuga doll versus a newer one. And I do notice a huge difference with the, the intensity and the quality of it. So, but that's the thing. It's like the great stuff, the great juice can't last forever. And that's why we spend, you know, some of the crazy money on some of the stuff, I've, you know, I've, over time. If it's been around a while and you want to get that old version, it's like you got to pay for it, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, with that, I'm going to uh, go get myself a little bit of water and uh, we'll return in just a moment. That's cool, man. I'll see you in a little bit. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Um, the, uh, the crazy thing is... Um, yeah, I mean, there's so many little pieces to this. I don't think we're ever going to agree, agree, but um, hopefully a lot of you guys are getting uh, something out of this still. High, high tier 12 year without question. Yeah, I mean, they're probably going through this stuff like uh, hotcakes, I imagine. Have not poured any of the the 12 and several months of enjoying this. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's like, I think once you step back and go back to it, 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 it's not a, a huge difference to be, you know, a classic good malt, but, you know, it's it's a tough one. The 15 is older, the 18 is older. The bit older. Yeah, I mean, that, that, is, that is something you have to keep in mind is when they shut the stuff down and they uh, restarted, basically, after the shutdown, a lot of that stuff was advertised as 12, 18, and 21, but that stuff was really 15... Uh, 21 and 26 years old, so it's it's a bit different. It's, just, it's not apple. It's not apples and apples. It's apples and oranges. You're comparing it to, I think, but I don't know. Older Ben Reich, yeah. Ben Reich, uh, that that 21 was not as good as I was hoping it was going to be, and that's that's you know my point with I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna always uh, like what she does. That's for sure. Does your new twelve actually have Rachel's name on it? Um, I believe it does, because I thought I was looking and saw it somewhere. Maybe just double check. Yeah, she's on the uh, the middle bottom. This is a 2019 bottle, so it's not like it's uh, an old bottle or anything. But uh, like I said, I mean, this is a legitimate twelve year old, and I think some of the ones that you guys are drooling over are, you know, not necessarily 12 year old whiskey either, but we'll have to check that out later. <laughs> the 2003 Oogie is awesome. Yeah. That I think everybody will agree with. And I think maybe that's the big difference. I haven't had any of the really, really old stuff. The 1918s in the States still have Billy. On it. Yeah. This one is a uh, 2019. And I think that's the reason why. Let me bring uh, Malt back in here. 
Sorry about that. No worries. Yeah, I mean, that's another thing I think that someone brought up that's a really good point. If you think about Glendronic's old stuff, it wasn't really 12, 15, and 21. It was like 15, 21, and 25-year-old stuff. You know what I mean? Because they had that mothball where they put everything away, and then all of a sudden they had to sell all this stuff that they've had sitting, you know, in the back better. Yep. Oh, this guy is – is uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> now, here's the deal with Dark Origins to me. When I first popped it open and I poured it, I liked it a lot. And this is the same for that Mortlock 15 that I first got. But – I swear to God, if you don't drink that stuff in like really quick, the oxidation is not a friend of uh, the Dark Origins. I was not a fan after just a month of that stuff in the bottle. I thought it was pretty pretty bad. It, it got really overly sulfuric, I think, pretty quickly. Have you ever had the Dark Origins before, Mo? I have not. I have not. It is worth getting your hands on. You can ask, believe it or not, I still see it in the store all the time, even though it's been discontinued for. I think a couple of years uh, now, um, but keep an eye out for it. If you see it for under a hundred bucks, I would pick it up and uh, see what you think about it. Cause I'm curious to see what you think, if it's the same or if it's uh, different. Yeah, that's one that I honestly have not had the opportunity to find or I see really anywhere. So I, it's kind of difficult <laughs> to get my hands on it, but if I get the opportunity, I will. You want to set the stage for the uh, new one? Yeah. So we're about to hit the second hour here on the Telex and Mall Show, man. Thank you all for joining us. Um, Big time. As Telex alluded to earlier, and as I will uh, bring up again, um, our goal uh, kind of going over into the next couple of weeks and beyond is to you know, try to do something a little bit more on the intro range revisit some things, share our thoughts on some initial things, hopefully give you guys some thoughts on like whiskeys on the on the lower end of the price range that are worth picking up, uh, which we just went through with the Glendronic 12. And then the second hour, we're going to be doing uh, something a little bit more uh, esoteric, something a little bit harder to find, something a little bit more um, per, sometimes expensive. And so tonight, uh, you know, our second review tonight is going to be Port Charlotte uh, MRC01. And so I'm happy to set the table on this. So here's what the canister looks like. This is what we're looking at. I'm going to pour some in the glass uh, so I can let this sit while I uh, give you guys the rundown. If you're not familiar with Port Charlotte or the MRC01. Oh, my goodness, man. It's funny. When you mentioned this this glass to me as being an option, I thought, oh, it's a, it's Port Charlotte. That should be pretty good. I didn't realize how specialized this dram is until I started looking into the yeah. first so, fill American whiskey and the second fill French wine cask and the finished in the French oak Bordeaux wine cask. I was like, wow, this is going to be. Yeah, there's a lot great. going on. So the Port Charlotte line, for those who don't know, is a heavily peated uh, it is not Octomore peated, but it is heavily peated from the Brook Lottie Distillery, which is located on Isla. And here's a little bit about what I can tell you. There's a ton of writing and explanation about what we're looking at here. But basically, this is 59.2% ABV. 50% uh, of the original spirit is in first fill bourbon. The other 50% is in second fill wine casks, red wine, we assume. Uh, and then they're married together for another year in uh, French oak, which is, uh, well, it's French oak from the Bordeaux region. So another wine cask. So basically what we're looking at here is a heavily peated whiskey that has been put into a variety of wine casks. Uh, there is no age statement on this, but it is non-chilled and natural color. Uh, as said, right here on the canister of Port Charlotte, this is what the bottle looks like. And this was a somewhat limited release. I believe it came out in 2018, if I'm not mistaken. But this is what the bottle looks like. It looks similar to their Port Charlotte 10. Um, yeah, 59.2%. Conceived, distilled, matured, and bottled at Brook Lottie. Um, seven aged, seven year. Oh, it's seven years old. It's seven yeah. aged years in oak cask, distilled in 2010, bottled in 2018. So it's a seven year whiskey. Oh, yeah, so I was going to say this was distilled in 2010, so this is going to be a really nice one, I think. So this is a little bit of a uh, 
a special Brooklotti. Not necessarily the easiest thing to get your hands on, but you might be able to find it. There's also an MCO one, uh, which I believe is a little bit older. But this is a, a pretty special release, and uh, I'm really excited to share a sample of this with Telic and for us to share our notes with y'all on what a wine cask finished, heavily peated Port Charlotte looks like. Telix, what yeah, do you get off the nose, brother? Uh, this has uh, got some amazing legs. Uh, one, one thing I like to do before I even go to the nose, I'll give it a little couple swirls, and yeah. I like to watch that oil drop down and see how thick the viscosity is around the Glencairn and see how slow it drops. And this one really holds some legs really nicely. It's really it's really well done, I can tell. Probably the high ABV helps with that a lot. Um, this yeah. one is got. A, if you're just curious on, you know, how heavily peated is it? This is 40 ppm, so this is going to be the same as an Ardbeg 10. That level, it's going to be a little higher than a Lafroig 10, which is at 30 ppm. So this is 40. Oh man! Oh my goodness gracious! You were know, you know this earlier, but like I think sometimes people think about peat and they think smoke and there's actually they're different right so a uh, heavily peated whiskey is not necessarily smoky right smoky whiskey is usually peated <laughs> exactly i mean that's the, or, or i mean there, there's a lot of whiskey you can get even some of these glendronics will have like a little smidgen of smoke to it but it's not peated at all the peat is kind of like the bite the the effervescence the the brightness of the of the the first taste and the smoke is what you get afterward kind of like yeah. the finish of the peat think of that's it that a great way. way to describe it take note of that folks yeah that's a great way to describe it um oh, man. We'll, uh, hand it to you to uh share your initial thoughts on the nose of this uh sample of the mrc01 the first note which i love i i, I get the peat smoke from the bat and, and there's a really nice glazed virginia ham going on in this glass Ooh, i like it <laughs> oh I even get the pineapple for God's sake, <laughs> and the cherry with the ham. Holy shit, that's good. <laughs> oh, it's a very young whiskey, and you can tell it's spirity. It's got that kind of uh, wet cement kind of clay note, but boy. Those bright fruit notes accenting that are huge. And with heavy smoke. And with like a peated whiskey, it being young is not a bad thing. Super. Sometimes you want a little bite with your 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 peated whiskey. So you might want a little bit of youth oh, yeah. in in there with some older stuff. So don't be, you know, hesitant to know that it's got some four or five year old peated stuff. I mean that's that's actually a good thing sometimes. Yep. There's a little bit of a peppermint. A little bit of a citrus, and then, yeah, it's just like those bright red fruits. Yeah, that's why I got the cherry from. It's funny because I got a little bit of a tropical note with the pineapple, a little bit of the sure. red fruit with the cherry, and a lot of brisket, man. Oh, my God. It's got brisket in the face. Yep. Yeah, I mean, honestly, our, our nose notes are pretty similar on this one, man. It's like pulled pork barbecue. Maybe a little bit of pepper or spice, but I can't tell until I have a little sip here. <laughs> well, let's do it, man. All right, down the hatch. This is neat, by the way. Oh, my goodness gracious. 58, uh, 59.2. Holy moly. That's good, though. It doesn't taste hot. It doesn't really burn or anything. Oh, man. Wow. Rich. Damn, I gotta get a bottle of this, dude. <laughs> My lord, so much pepper. Good black pepper, though, and it's it's yeah. it's not in your overly in your face like some like Gergelikis can be, like it's it, or Taliskers. It's not too much. It's like just the right amount. I gotta grab my water. One sec. Oh my, I'm surprised at how well this this taste on the palate with with that high abv you don't really i mean honestly if you blind tested me right now and you said okay telex i want you to tell me what the abv in this is i would probably say i mean i could tell 
the ABV usually, but this one will really fool you. I would probably say this was like a 52, 51. I wouldn't think it'd be as high as almost 60. Right. Oh, like, yeah, the palette on this for me, it's, it's wise beyond its years. It's longer than you'd expect from a young whiskey. You can definitely taste, taste the useful, the youthfulness, youthfulness, usefulness in this. Um, just so much going on. Red fruit. Oh man, that finish is glorious. Light, slight cinnamon, spice, nutmeg, pepper. There's a citrus bite, and then it goes into a incredibly long finish. That nutmeg was spot yeah. on. I was like, what is that spice I'm getting? It's not cinnamon. It's not uh, peppery. It's something else. And I think nutmeg was a really good. Uh, it has almost like an eggnoggy feel it's, to it's, it. It's less. It's less. I, I would honestly say it's like allspice. Yeah, Chinese. Yeah, allspice. Yep. Yeah. Five spice. Five. Uh, five uh, spice. And a long finish. Like a longer finish than you would expect. It's subtle, like the finish, you get a little bit of the fruit notes, that ashiness, the spice. Holy shit, where did you find this, dude? <laughs> dude, I got lucky, man. So this is uh I found it at a whiskey shop. It's about 125 a bottle. I That's not it. bad for this. Yeah, I, I was thinking. It. I was thinking you were going to say 150 to 175. To be honest with you, so that's yeah, problem. I got it 125, and I was I was lucky on that. I mean, nowadays, I mean, this is probably about a year old in terms of release, so it's probably a little bit harder to get. Uh, really special, man. I mean, Brooke Lottie's been doing tons of amazing stuff. This one is clearly like right in there for me. This is my wheelhouse, guys. This is like exactly yeah. what I... I knew you'd dig it the most, brother. That's why I was happy to get you a sample of this. Holy moly. This is insane. This is like... I am I'm, I'm a, I know you weren't as, as much as a fan as I was of the Kilhoman Red Wine cast, but to me, this is on that level, dude. I mean, it's like fucking insane. <laughs> Man, that, that development. How you go from like sweet fruit... And the tartness and the like juiciness, and then it's just immediate. It's like a sh it's a huge spice bomb, and yet the spice bomb it's rounded. It's not acidic. It's so rounded. It's really, sm I had to use the word smooth, but it is very right. smooth on the delivery. It's like it's like every spice note has a has a vanilla a drop of vanilla caramel in it that just rounds it out. Quite special, man. My. God, I, I'm surprised at how good this actually is. Now, if you were thinking back to the Kill Home and Red Wine cask, which is kind of similar, would you rate this like way above, a little above? Uh, how, how, what was the difference for you between the two drams, if you can remember? Anything? I think that the Kill Home and the Kill Home and didn't have the like prolonged development that this one does. And honestly, I just felt that it had, it was a little bit. It just wasn't as complex. It definitely doesn't have the nice spice factor this one has. I do like the spice in this one. Yeah, I mean, I think this is just a step above. I mean, you, you said spice, and I think that makes sense. Like for me, it just the development is just so prolonged. The the one on the on the Kill Homan, it was like it was a little bit more glossed over with the red wine than this one. The red wine, I think, plays more harmoniously with the like heavy peat barley sugar kind of even the bourbon notes to some degree whereas in the in the red wine Kilhoman I felt like it was all kind of papered over with this kind of cloying uh, rounded off red wine failing so like I just think the, the complexity of this that bourbon get, god man I'm still getting it on the finish I mean I've, I it's been 30 seconds and it's like I just got this hit of like light brown sugar caramel that first fill bourbon just like man i do like the casts that they use on the kilhoman one but i do appreciate the spice factor in this and the balance like you said if you are a bourbon fan and you are interested in a red wine cask and you like spice like a creality this is going to be like your dream dram <laughs> really yeah, right I mean, this is like this is this is 
insane. <laughs> even at even at that youthfulness. I mean, the youthfulness shows up. I mean, imagine this at 12, 13 years. <laughs> like, oh my God. <laughs> Man. A little bit more maturation. Probably more maturation in the bourbon, not the wine. I think the, if you if they went too long in the wine, it would overdo it. But, maybe, that, maybe that's why you didn't like the Kilhoman as much. Because I, I do think I got more wine cask out of the Kilhoman than this. But I get more of a balance with the bourbon and the spice on this one than I do the Kilhoman. So it, I can see where you're coming from. It, it, it's The Kilhoman is definitely more one-sided. This one's more better balanced i think overall yeah which is a lot which is you know a statement considering how assertive and bold this whiskey is oh man it it is it's like i don't want it to sound like it's a a, a fragile flower it's definitely not that yeah. but it, it's so well done that even at 60 percent abv it's like wow i could there are I, some folks that attest to the mc01 which is not red wine finished and older being better i I've had a sample of it. My personal opinion is yet. <laughs> yet. <laughs> this one is just yet. <laughs> yet. There's like the only thing holding this back is its youth. I would love to have a cigar with this. I, 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 out of the corner of my eye, I saw Dustin talking about a cigar. I'm like, you know what? This would go so damn well with a cigar right now, dude. Man. Holy. <laughs> Would you say sorry? A bit of a steak. Oh yeah, a steak and a cigar. A steak first with this dram, and then another dram. I just think the like it. part of this is the nose. I think the nose is like the most is probably the one thing that throws like it's the least impressive. Well, the weird thing though, even though it's, it's not a clay a note, it's that clay wet wet cement, which is just the youthfulness of the whiskey. <sighs> Even though it's not as is maybe as good as the palette finish, it's still really nice. I mean, that brisket, that pulled pork, the yeah. <laughs> the Virginia ham with the pineapple cayenne berry, pepper. the cayenne pepper. I mean, my God, man! Right? This is like this is exactly what I need. <laughs> good, because I got a lot more of it. Oh my God, man! This is this is insane. You get to save that for me, definitely. I might have to buy the rest off of you. <laughs> You're getting a lot of praise, y'all. Have anybody in the chat had the Port Charlotte MRC01? Would love to hear your thoughts. Tell us yeah. if you were going to give this a uh, preliminary score, oh, where man. would you fall? Uh, D Dustin or, or Steven, have you guys already had this one? I'm curious. And if you had, what, what did you uh, score it? For me, I I really do enjoy it, and I did I, I did love the Kilhoman Red Wine Cast. It was just the right casts for me, and I think that's the difference between me and some other people. Is I really fall in love with if the casts are really good, I fall in love with it. Um, but this one, I think, actually might be a slight bit better because of the spice and the bourbon cask notes you get off of it, too, with all the red wine stuff going along with it. it man, and I gave the, the Kilhoman one a pretty good score, like a four point, like two, five or five, I'm sure. This one is, a, is, is up there with it, man. I mean... I don't know. I mean, yeah, age might help it out a little bit, but is it good for what it is? Hell yeah. I wouldn't change anything about it, really. I, I, I give it a 4.5 solid. Maybe even 4.75. I'm feeling I'm, I'm really close because the, the ABV is perfect. The craft is perfect. It's not chill filtered. It's not colored. It's it's got everything except age. That's the only thing. And with peated whiskey, you don't really need age for it to be classical. So that's why I'm like, man. I mean, it's at least a 4.5, if not a 4.75, I think. Right on, man. High praise from Telexo Whiskey Tech. I'm, I'm right on your heels. I think this is a 4.25 out of on my scale, which I it's uncontroversial. <sighs> Like, I think this is a whiskey you need to try. It's an intermediate range whiskey. I think it's something that if you've never had, I mean, this is not something I think can be fully appreciated if you haven't spent some time and been in the trenches with a lot of uh, heavily peated scotches. 
Oh, it's glorious. I mean, this is probably on my prelim score is a 4.25. This is the best one that you that that I've this is one of the best ones I've had in a long time. I, oh, I, man, I love it, dude. I love it. I love it. Because I am a big fan of the Octomore, the really heavily peated stuff. And this does remind me of the bite you get from an Ardbeg tip. Dude, how good is this whiskey, man? Seriously. <laughs> I mean, if you if you think put of the, four more years on it, put five more years on it. If you just put the, if you just think of the bite of this whiskey, couldn't you consider this the same bite as like an Ardbeg Ten? Yeah, of? totally, totally, totally. It's got that, it's got that factor, but it's got that glorious, like if you like pulled pork sandwiches and a little bit of fruit on the side and some spice, like a little white and black pepper on the side. Oh my god, <laughs> it's crazy good, dude. Brook Lottie's doing magic, man. I mean, this is a seven, eight year old whiskey, man. That is insane. I, I cannot wait to see what Port Charlotte does with a few more years. Like, get them a 15 and a 21. Oh, my God. A 15 and 18, sorry. <laughs> 15 and 18 year old. Oh, I'll be all over that like crazy. I hope they don't charge us like $500 for it, though. That's my, my biggest yeah. fear. Yeah, man. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed the review of this one. I, and I do hope if you get the chance, you can get your hands on it. It is, it is a special whiskey. It's fantastic one thing i've one thing i've noticed is uh port charlotte has a lot of these uh, interestingly coded type of offerings yeah and i was wondering have you ever had anything else besides this one that they offer i know that there's like one that's been out recently the oc01 if i'm not wrong i don't know i i've not and there's so many to try to catch up on is it the olc01 from 2010 yeah, that's the one that I've noticed some folks getting their hands on. Yep. Yeah, they're calling it this. They're calling it their cask exploration series. Is what they're. It's a 2010 distill, just like the one that we just had. It's 100% barley uh, from a specific region of Scotland, also at 40 ppm, and it looks like a, it's 30% first fill ex bourbon, 40% second fill ex bourbon, and five percent second fill ex Shira wine, 25 percent ex vin du natural, which is like a French fortified wine. I mean, they are going balls to the wall. And this is 2018 is when it's released. So it's an eight-year-old, seven-year-old, somewhere around there. Um, it's placed into Oloroso Sherry Hogsheads from Fernando de Castilla to finish its maturation. Also not chill filtered at 55.1 that sounds glorious too man and i'll i love a, a french syrah cask of the octomore yeah. the octomore 7.2 is a french syrah cask and that is my favorite octomore that i've ever had across the board it's that good do you want to hear what um poor charlotte's tasting notes were on this now that we've scored it yeah go ahead man here's what it's got to say uh red fruits raspberry and cherry Icing, sugar, and marshmallow, overlaying maple syrup, chocolate, roasted coffee bean, licorice, walnut, and almond, woven through with soft peat smoke. Soft? Really? No. <laughs> and the unmistakable ozone tang that only comes with a full Isla maturation, a summer fruit, and peat extravaganza, all overlaid with Turkish delight. That's the phrase. The phrase of the day is ozone tang. I'm sorry, you lost me. Tang, ozone. Y'all. What's up with the ozone tang? You guys know what's up with the ozone tang? Turkish delights used for a lot of whiskey. I've noticed. I, I've never Turkish had a Turkish delight. delight type thing, so I can't compare that. But I mean, some of their notes make some sense. But I think we kind of nailed it with what we gave. To be honest with you, <laughs> I did not get the marshmallow at all, but. I'm glad I got to share this dram with you, homie. God, man, same here. But there's no, there's no marshmallow here. But there's a lot of, of great ass ham and brisket, pulled pork, barbecue. I'm talking more of the smoky Carolina kind of side of barbecue. Yeah, Holy yeah. shit, it's good. <laughs> so good, man. No marshmallow in here. I'm sorry, I did not get the marshmallow. <laughs> Andrew Page says ozone tang would be a good. A good name for a brand, Ozone Tang Single Malt Scotch. That's gonna be my new my new band name, Ozone Tang. I'm taking it. <laughs> <laughs> I needed a good I needed, I needed a good project name, so I'm, I'm gonna take Dude, that. <laughs> uh, 
Hit me up at ozone.tang at gmail. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's crazy. Oh, oh my God. God. I'm glad you enjoyed it, man. Looks like Cohen's talking about the cigar blend from uh, probably Dalmore. Uh, the Murray Hill and I was looking to see if they had anything in it. Oh, they're talking about the Dalmores. That's the thing, man. This is scary. 239 for a Dalmore 18. There is no fucking way when that shit should be like 160. I'm telling you. <laughs> Ooh. 160 is what it was just one year ago. And now I see it for here in Maryland, like for 210, 220. And if it's in Louisiana for 240, that is way too high. <laughs> yeah, no thanks, man. Um, that's a little intense. I will pick one up for us, though. I'll be the, I'll take, I'll take one for the team. I, I do need a Dalmore 18 at some point. So I will get that for us at some wait, point. Wait, wait, you need a Dalmore 18? Well, the reason I say that is because I'm trying to collect either an 18 or 21 year old from every distillery at some point. And Dalmore, the highest one I have is a 15, and I was not a huge fan of it. But I thought, you know what? If I'm and I'm trying to get the distillery bottles first, and then go to Independence afterward. Um, so if I get a if I get a distillery bottle, I, I mean the King Alexander is great, but it's not. 275 great um i'm gonna stick to like the Ooh, yeah i'm gonna stick to like the 18 and and try to get it for like 200 bucks if i can that's my my goal at least at this point okay we'll see uh, what I mean, if you if you pull it off i'll i'll gladly participate in whatever way i can yeah i'll send you a sample and we'll have to take a little look at it it'll be one of those second hour uh pours that's for sure <laughs> Yeah, yeah, definitely. I I have only had I've had Delmore. Uh, I've had their twelve year old uh, uh, distillery bottling, which I did not love, and then I have also had their um, I've had their uh, a fifteen, which was from that boutique whiskey company, which was an indie indie release. How was that? What did you think of that one? Was it like that, I mean, that one was good? That one was good. Um, but I mean, you it's what you would expect from a uh, an indie release, you know. I mean, like it was cast strength, it was like 50 some percent or whatever. And, yeah, same thing with I had an SMWS uh, Scotch Malt Whiskey Society bottle that was Dalmore, and it was a uh, when I, I picked up when I was uh, a member a while back, and it was actually really good. Uh, for I mean, it didn't taste like any other Dalmore I've ever had. That's that's what's weird about independent bottlings is there's no really way to know what you're in for. There's no track record really. It's it's not like something that's repeatable unless you get that exact same bottle. That's what makes it tough to do independent bottlings, but. Um, yeah, if I'm going to get a Dalmore for myself and not be collecting them. I would definitely go all independent bottling. That's for sure. It's yeah. Not well, because they add so much color into their stuff. Huge amount. And the chill filtering is an issue too. And okay. it's just the craft just isn't there. The marketing is over the top. I mean, I mean, the only people that do a, a crazier job than these guys is probably Holland Park with their Viking stuff. <laughs> If you think about it, you know what I mean? But it's, it's, it is what it is. It's, it's, you know, overpriced and underproofed. I think it's a good, that's, that's the best uh, synopsis of uh, what we're talking about. I think pretty much right there. Let me know when you get to this, to the Dalmore. Looking forward to throwing whiskey on the floor. <laughs> yeah. I, I prefaced my uh, short review with uh, don't, don't throw your, you know, whiskey over your Glen Cairn over your shoulder and none of that insanity. It's not worth it. <laughs> oh yeah, what, what is that guy? Uh, that fucking guy, Richard uh, Patterson, man. He's like, just throw it on the ground, like some bourgeois. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I thought it was some big joke when I when I first got, you know, a few, like four years ago, I think is when I started this whole whiskey journey. And when I first started looking around at, you know, looking at Ralphie's stuff and looking at different things, and I'm like, who's this Richard Patterson guy? And I, I, I when I think of him, I think of his equal basically being Ron, um, the Anchorman Burgundy. Ron Burgundy from you know, Will Ferrell's character. That's who he reminds me of, really, if you think about it. It's ridiculous, man. 
<laughs> I'm like, how could you have that as your brand ambassador? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> I mean, the guy, the guy's polishing turds, man. It's crazy. I, I, I just don't get it when you got you know people putting out this kind of stuff. This poor Charlotte is. I mean, I, the sad thing is we know who Richard Patterson is, but we don't know who the master. I mean, I don't. I should know because I'm I'm going to look it up after this. We don't know who the master blender is for this guy. You know what I mean? Right. Why is that? Yeah, no, I'm with you, man. I uh, I remember seeing the Richard Patterson videos. When I first got into Scotch, you know, over half a decade ago now, and uh, I think half a decade, yeah, about that. And I remember saying, like, I like, I remember like learning stuff from him because you you can learn stuff from him about nosing whiskey and like how to appreciate it. But when he started throwing stuff on the ground, I was like, "Are you kidding me? Like, do you realize that most working folks are?" like me and you and others and the people that we're hanging out with tonight like are spending our hard-earned money on scotch whiskey and you're trying to say yeah just throw your fucking grams on the ground like some some bourgeois country club mother like are you kidding me i tell you what if it, if it was an r big 30 i would buy my tongue would be on the, if it was an r big 30 my tongue would be on the floor lapping that shit up dude. yeah dude, for real talk man <laughs> Like, are you kidding me? Like, what is this? Like, this guy, it's so tone deaf. And maybe it's just, like, part and parcel for, like, somebody who's speaking on behalf of the, quote, scotch whiskey industry who's, like, doesn't understand. Like, here's the, I'll, I'll say this. Look, scotch whiskey here in the States, it's not exactly, like, an entry-level thing, like, you don't go to the store and you buy scotch. I mean, we're freaking Americans. People buy bourbon. Like, this is the way it is. But the idea that, like, you would, like, create an extra level of pretension and have your video viewed a million times on YouTube about, like, oh, if you do buy scotch, this is the way. Like, you want to talk about making this inaccessible to people who would, like, potentially enjoy it? That's the way to do it. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just thankful that no one else that I can think of does what he does. Like, I've uh, never you, you brought up a good thing that I want to kind of uh, maybe tackle. Uh, we were, you know how we were talking about Anok and Bob Blair and those brands? Those are Tybev brands. There's a lady named Steph Ridgeway that that is like the the lady that controls a lot of the branding and, and whatnot of the Enoch and Ball Blair Spayburn uh, brands for Tybev. I'm, I'm wondering, uh, it'd be awesome to have like an interview with her to say, Hey, you know, what are you, where are you going with the whole Ball Blair, you know, push to the new 12, you know, the, the whole new uh, age releases. Are you guys going to be thinking of doing the same thing with Enoch soon? Are you, how are the supplies on those whiskeys? Those are the things I would love to ask her, like on the side, you know, and see what she would, would uh, say. I know she's done some stuff with the Scotch Four Dummies in the past. I haven't seen any uh, episodes. I'll have to go back and look and see if, she, if she's already covered it. But if not, I'll have to ask her if, if she'd be willing to maybe do a, a quick, you know, just a question answer type of thing and see, you know, what, yeah. what they're doing, you know. Yeah. Uh, inquiring minds want to know. Because you and I are huge fans of Enoch 24. I mean, that stuff is like gold. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And I twenty four is primo. primo. I've, had, I've had the Speedburn fifteen and liked it. They have a twenty five that is very reasonably priced at around two twenty. So I'm thinking about, and I know where I can get it. So I might pick that up maybe for us on the side. It's a Speedburn twenty five. I've never yeah. had a Speedburn, so I'm, I'm I'm inquiring minds want to know. They're pretty good. The fifteen is no joke, and it's one of those. Enoch esque type distilleries where they don't have the um, they don't have the uh, you know the 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 push for you know the followers and whatnot. But is the dram good? Yeah, I mean that, that's what it's all about. Is you know right. how good is the whiskey? So I'll have to I'll have to see I'll have to look her up and see if she's willing to maybe uh, ask answer a few questions, e even if not on video, at least on the side where I can ask her. You know. Hey, where are you guys going with some of this stuff? Because I'm I'm really curious before I even buy a new bottle of Ball Blair. 
Well, yeah, and I've heard mixed reviews about those new bubblers, which is a bummer because I loved their style of the old vintage ones. Yeah. So since we have about you know twenty minutes left or so, I have to. Uh, I know we're going to try and do a, a younger whiskey, an accessible whiskey, not necessarily younger, accessible uh, in the first hour. But uh, let's do a quick rundown of what we have left in our current batches and see what folks think. Sound good to you? Yeah. I know that you've got the um, a specialty one you've got from me is the Blasta, which we can hold for like a second hour deal. It's a low ABV, though. It's only 40%, but it is an unpeated, well, it's slightly peated Ardbeg. It's not like any other Ardbeg you'll, you'll, you'll ever have. The sad thing about it is it's really hard to find, so that'll be a second hour one. Yeah. The um, list of Bay Sweet Smoke is, is readily available overseas. You can find it pretty easily. It's 48.9. That might be a good entry, like like first hour one, if you're up for it. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, and we also have the Lefroy single cask 12 year old. And so, yeah, let us know in the chat. Um, the what our second hour whiskey should be next week because I think, barring any disaster, uh, I think the first whiskey we're going to review next week is going to be the Lefroy Karchis 2020 port and red wine cask. There you go. Uh, I don't, uh, you know, uh, assuming there's no. Issues on my end, uh, that should be in my hand by next week. So we'll definitely do that. But if you guys have any thoughts, um, should we pair it with the Lefroy uh, High Grove 12 cast strength? That's well, not cast strength, single cast. And then there's the Arbeg Blasa and the Elisa Bay Sweet Smoke. So we still got a couple left. Uh, let us know if you're interested in any of those. For next week, what, what we might have to do, and, and it's, it's not a big problem per se, but we, what we might want to do is do the high grow first at 46%. It's the tw- oh, single yeah. cast 12. And then do the Carriages 2020 second, even though the, the Carriages 2020 might be easier to find, if you know what I mean. It's like we might have to swap the hour, but I think that might work out. Yeah. But uh, Stephen, Stephen Connor said, uh, if you guys are up for it, I'd love to send you some samples. Dude, Stephen Connor, hit me up, malt.muser at whiskey, or I'm sorry, malt.muser at gmail. And you probably know Telex's email. Dude, we would love to try some samples from you. You have such a great whiskey collection. We appreciate you hanging out, sharing your thoughts, sharing your knowledge, and potentially sharing your samples. Um, we would love to sample some of your stuff, man. So, like, Feel free to shoot us an email. We accept your generosity completely and uh, we'd love to try some of your stuff on the show. Definitely. If uh, if it doesn't get here for a while, we could do the, um, the next week we could do like the, start out with the Sweet Smoke and then do the Blasda afterward possibly. Yeah. That would be a, a, a good, uh, because Elisa Bay is no joke. They're they're one of the better new distilleries that I've I've had. I've I've had a lot of the newer ones that are coming of age, like Kings Barnes and uh, Ark the Mer- Merchant and some of the other ones. So Elisa Bay is actually pretty decent when it comes to uh, new whiskey. Uh, this could be a good one, but we'll see. Um, the Blasto is is interesting no matter how you look at it. So that'll be a good on the side deal. But uh, definitely next week, we'll definitely do the, the carriages and the uh, high grove. Uh, and we can sort out after that. Because I'm going to try to get you the Tamdu 15, the Almar 21, the Kilhoman, yeah. the Umbrook, and the Ardbeg Black limited release on the side if I can. Yeah, we're going to do a back to – we're going to go back in black times two. And we're going to go <laughs> APGC on this. <laughs> uh, I'm going to get him a, a committee release, and we'll, we're will we going to try both blacks back-to-back eventually. So we got a lot of fun stuff showing up, man. And, like, honestly, you know, we're we're rolling with the punches here, man. We want to we wanna cater the show as much as it's uh, interesting and useful to you all. So, like, your feedback and recommendations are, you know, the utmost importance. I know yeah. the PH Sil 2 said, uh, what did you pay for the new Lefroy's? He'd seen them for 120 30 I paid $90 uh, USD, but they're not here yet, and that was two weeks ago. So that says what you can. 
eventually they'll show up. But yeah, I mean, I know that the new Lafroig um, is coming in at a bit of a higher price, the Karchus, than uh, previous year releases. And maybe it's because of the wine release. Or, or That's the reason why. That's why you see the black and the carriages being a little higher is because they're using these red, these Pinot Noir slash red white casks kind of thing. Yep. But yeah, I mean, we got a lot of exciting stuff coming up, man. And so, you know, as much as folks want to uh, let us know your thoughts, do let us know, man, because uh, we definitely want to uh, continue doing this show. If you like the new format tonight where we do, uh, you know, in the uh, entry level kind of uh, single malt scotch on the first end and then do something a little bit more hard to find on the second, hit us up with a like, man. Give give uh, Talks of Whiskey Tech a plus plus. Subscribe to his channel. Subscribe to mine. Uh, we definitely appreciate all your feedback and your thoughts on all of this. So we appreciate it. Hey everyone, good to see you, man. Late uh, late drive by, but hey, definitely, uh, everyone watch, it. watch it after the fact. Yeah, the care just uh, came a little earlier, but I did get it from overseas. So that's what she said. It costs <laughs> it costs a little bit more than uh, ninety, but it. It, you know, it wasn't much more than that. We'll put it that way. Um, but yeah, when I saw it available, I thought I better jump all over this because I don't know how long it's going to be available for. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. That's for sure. Spring Bay Ten still the best shelfer on the market. That's not cast strength. Yeah, but man, those prices have went up on the Spring Bay. I remember when you used to be able to get that for sixty. It's like ninety around my parts these days in Philadelphia. That's sad, man. See, that's that's that, there's a good prime example of, of value being an issue with that. But yeah. seventy five is seventy five. I think is fair for that whiskey. Anything above seventy five is not not good for the Springbank Ten. Yeah, I'm with you on that. A hundred dollars? No, I'm sorry, but that's way too high. I would say. I mean, I do like it. I'm not saying it's a bad whiskey, but you know is it much better than the glendronic 12 i don't think it's a ton better to me i mean it's good but it's not like it blow me away you know yeah that much better but that's just me <laughs> i think it's pretty good though but yeah 75 80 might be my top set for the spring bank 10. yeah everyone's a tariffs in demand yep exactly, exactly. there are, there are look, ways look at the prices of lagavulin 16 right now like a little 16 is a hundred dollar bottle now. I remember two years ago it was 65, 70. It should still be around 80 in my opinion, but uh, I, can, I can still find it. But the, here's where, you know, if you can find a way to get stuff online, for, especially when it comes to these tariffs, I've noticed that if I do my homework and if I do a lot more digging and, and looking around for decent online deliveries, I will find a lot better prices than I can find here in Maryland. That's for sure. And for DHS to say 135 in Kentucky for like a volume 16. Yeah, that is brutal. Yeah. That is insane. 120? Are you serious? There is no way I would spend more than 85 bucks on that whiskey. I'm sorry. Dude, it, 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 the prices are crazy, man. Springbank and Lagavulin, I've noticed it the most. But it's it's starting to hit everything, man. I want to pour me some more Glendronic, matter of fact. Do it. <laughs> My $65 is actually paying off. Yeah, I, uh, I'm sipping a little bit more of that myself. But that's yeah, that's that is crazy. Two hundred dollars for the twelve? That is nuts, man. Because here I can get it for one forty four all day long. One forty four. Yeah, but I mean, God, I mean, even a year ago it was like one twenty max. True, that is true. But even like three years ago, I thought I saw it for one forty four. I have to look and see if they, oh, they used the, uh, they did raise the price. It looks like on that. Yeah. 120 for the spring bank 12. Oh, yeah, yeah, that dude lost cause isn't wrong. That's totally that's the norm here in southwest PA, southwest New Jersey. 120 bucks for the spring bank 12 cast rank. That is scary because that was 100 here, not like two years ago. The KNL on Mecham the Glen Scotia 15 rum cast finished 2019. Okay, wow, 140. That's not bad. That's a specialty uh, deal. I love the 15 regular, so if there's a rum cask finish that you're saying that's pretty good, I would definitely jump all over that. 
three times what it was last year. Yeah. That is crazy, man. Uh, I'm sorry, but that's just nuts. 120. Wow. The game would you compare the. That's true. Yeah. The Spring Bank, uh, the, the cast strength 12 is much better than any 12 year old. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, there's you can count on one hand how many 12 year olds even match up to the Spring Bank 12. Even, even a week, even a week release from them. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I would I would put up against a Springbank twelve is maybe the Lagavulin twelve at cast strength. Um, what other twelve cast? Yeah, Lagavulin twelve cast strength is probably the only one. Uh, I mean, I have not had the Highland Park single cast twelve year yet, which I have. I'm going to open it up later this year, but I, you have I can't. A, hold on, it'll be close to that. You have a cast strength twelve year old? Yeah. Let is me it, grab it. Is it, rip, it. is it the rib? Is it the rib tide? It is the Riptide. Ah, oh, nice, man. That's hard to find. Yeah, they did. Uh, they're all like regional releases. So, like, if you're depending on where you are in the states, you can get nor'easter. I've seen that. So here's what it is. Twenty. This is a single cast high, 12. Yeah. I love Highland Park twelve. So this is sixty five point five percent ABV. First fill European oak cherry punchins. Uh yes. 12 years old. I mean, this is like a buck 50. I got this because I just love Highland Park 12. And so it's a special thing I'm going to do for, uh, I'll probably open it up in December. I haven't opened it yet, but you know, it comes in one of these little baggies, old label, you know, they don't, it's not Viking honored to the, to the, <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, I mean, come on. Right. I mean, how do you turn down 65.5% Highland Park? You can't. I I would love to have a little sample of that at some. Well, point. you will, my friend. Uh, right. It will be in the mail to you. When, I'm not opening this until December because I'm going to do uh, 12 year olds in December. I'm going to do a couple 10 year olds in October. But believe me, man, a sample of this will come your way. Looks like uh, DC's got it, and I think they do deliver to people for uh, states yeah. that are uh, over. Everywhere, everywhere is totally right. That's where I got it from. Is Potomac Line? Yeah, nice. I got it a couple years ago, it was like one hundred forty some, one hundred fifty bucks. Yeah, well, I'll have to. Yeah, I'll I'll have to take a look and see if I can find a little bit of. Uh, I think I think I found a, a version of that in California. I'll try to pick up that one, and maybe we can like. Yeah, split. there's a bunch because they're not all twelve year old either. Uh, either. Some of them are 15, 10. They're all over. The Nor'easter, I think, is 11 years old. Oh, okay. Huh. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it because, I mean, it's hard to find a cast strength 12-year-old at any, any distillery. Oh, yeah. really. Totally, totally. I mean, and, you know, I overpaid for this Highland Park, but I did it because... I mean, <laughs> it was it's Highland funny. Park. It's hard it to turn down. Moments, right? It was just one of those moments where you're like, yeah, I'm going to do it. I mean, if Highland Park was more like a Springbank slash uh, Lagavulin and always had a 12-year cast strength, it'd, it'd be different. But since it's like a limited edition, it's like, yeah, 20 bucks extra is not going to kill you, you know, to Man, throw it the out. I this, the more I'm just loving this Glendronic 12. <laughs> I think it might come up to a four. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know if it's going to come up to a four, uh, but I'm I'm there on the three. I think I gave it a three, two, five. The more I drink it, it's maybe a three point five. I, it's just so. No, I think you gave it a three five, and I think you might be getting to close to a three point seven five. <laughs> you might be right. You might be right. <laughs> this is subjectivity in action, y'all. There you go. I hope y'all enjoyed our uh, our tastings of these two whiskeys. Tonight. Oh man, and, uh, uh, Telex and I have been well. We've been doing this for a couple months now, and again, we're we're evolving the show. And we want to make sure we do something accessible and also something that's like kind of a little special. Uh, so I hope you guys are enjoying it so far, man. That that portion I, I of Charlotte, this, like, uh, yeah, this this Glendronic Twelve is totally solid. Man. And that poor Charlotte, man, that was like unreal. I was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be like a three point five to three point seven five, but man, it it was solid. It was very solid. I couldn't believe it. Thank you, Trooper, man. Appreciate it, man. We appreciate all your support, too, man. This is, uh, you know, it's great that Telex and I get to hang out and talk about whiskey, but it's even more fun to, like, hang out with a bunch of folks. So I appreciate the uh, kind comments, uh, uh, Trooper. It's all awesome. 
I think Dustin doesn't like the online ordering thing, but it's a tough thing. I mean, I don't love it. I would much rather support like our local um, people that sell scotch, of course. But if oh, they yeah. don't, if they don't I have do what you're looking yeah, for, try living in PA. <laughs> if they don't <laughs> have what you're looking PA, for, you might you might feel a little different because PA is PA is on uh, a little bit next level on that. I mean, even in even in like Maryland, it's, it's tough to find a lot of stuff because I go across, dude. I I mean, I'm in Philadelphia, man, West Philly. I go across the river. Uh, to go over to New Jersey if I can't find something at the government stores here because uh, you can usually get a little it's not that their prices are better the government stores are pretty good prices here but sometimes you just don't get the variety and so I uh, I will go across the river to uh, you know hunt for something special very true and, and, and sometimes I might you know find like a little niche like the Pennsylvania has a specific uh, online offering that they, yep. they do a lot of them man. I they mean a lot yeah say what you want about government stores and like yeah there are pluses and minuses but some of them man actually have a pretty good uh, uh, collection and and you can get decent stuff and yeah it is what it is I am thankful that I live in Maryland because they do have a county by county difference that every right. county has a different law. It's yeah, weird. Montgomery County versus yeah, yeah. I know all about that. I remember it from my days of living in D.C. How different that is, but isn't that crazy? Like, I wonder why that is, but I'm not complaining. I'm just glad that we can. United order. States, man. I'm just glad we can order stuff to Maryland. So if you like Malt, if Malt, this is good for you. If you, if you are looking for something you can't find that doesn't deliver to PA, let me know and I'll be happy to try to help you out on the side and, and see what we can do. Yeah, we'll do for sure, man. All right, man. So it's been uh, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm just looking at see what. What's going on with these? Some of these comments are still coming through. Yeah, I I uh, I know the owners of Benash. I go there all the time, man. Totally, Andrew Page. I hear you on that. The guys in Benash, and uh, uh, they're just outside Philly in um, uh, Southern New Jersey. Great, great whiskey shop. Plus, they give us discounts because I'm uh, in the Philadelphia Whiskey Society. So, super cool people. Are all four of these Philadelphia based? Uh, no, uh, just Benash. Uh, Saratoga is New York. Ace is Minnesota. Aster is New York. I know Ace. I don't know these other three, so I'll have to look that up. Because I usually use Ace Spirits. Aster, Saratoga. Yeah, you I never tried. Huh. That's interesting. That's pretty crazy. Well. All right, man. Well, thanks so you much, you guys, for stopping by. I really, really appreciate it, as always. <laughs> Yeah, me too, man. And uh, do join us next week. Um, there's a good chance we'll be doing the new Lafroy Karchis 2020. If not, we will definitely be doing the Lafroy 12 year old single cast from High Grove. And uh, we'll have all sorts of other fun stuff to do, man. So uh, if you haven't yet, uh, do hit subscribe on Telex of Whiskey Tech. Feel free to give me a sub if you haven't yet. And uh, with that, Another yeah. Tuesday in the books, my friend. Yeah. Out, Telix. Oh, it's, it's, it's I love, I'll, I'll, I'll be hunting down that poor Charlotte, dude. That's how good it was. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll figure out a way to get you another sample, man. Oh, Lord. You, you don't have to do that, but I will, I will, I will try <laughs> my, my, my best to find my own bottle if I can, because it was that good. It was definitely worth a track down, I think. Yeah, for sure, man. Thanks for the comments, Stephen. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's yeah, thanks, definitely Solange, man. And we'll catch you guys next Tuesday, man. Uh, be here or be nowhere, as they would say. <laughs> <laughs> See Take ya, Solange, man. Yeah, I'll stick around with you there, uh, Stephen, and uh, finish the dram. And Mr. Dustin, I appreciate it. Even though we don't always see eye to eye. And same with Steven. I, I appreciate what you guys bring because uh, it's not easy to to get your own eyes around everything. Sometimes it's good to have a, a couple side views to things to, you know, get it all in, under perspective. But, yeah, the uh, 
No, I really appreciate the uh, feedback. It's, it's, it's very uh, appreciated. Yeah, this one, I wish I had a, it's funny, because I wish I had like an old, old, like, you know, 10-year, 15-year-old version of the 12 to sit down and try side by side. That would be awesome if it was like an old version. And because um, I'm not saying this is better than any older 12. I mean, it very well could be. To me, this one's good, and there might even be one better ones out there. But um, be interesting to see how this stands up to an older version of the twelve. But I, from the older twelve, and it was only a few years ago, I understand it hasn't suffered from three years. Has it suffered from five to six years? It, it very well could have, and I'm not going to discount that. So, Dustin might be dead on with with that whole thing so you know how it goes oh yeah i'm gonna still i'm gonna still uh, have a have a little sip here and there actually you know what i'm gonna have a little more <laughs> this is a this deserves a little bit more in the old glass as i tell you what i mean even though i do like the mckellen 12 i'm not knocking it i think it's a good dram it's one of my favorite sherry drams um and I do like the um, I do like an apple hour. You know, it's the eighteen was was pretty good. Um, I haven't tried. I'm trying to remember back to the twelve. It, it was so rough, like sixteen ish. That I don't even know if I even went that way. But it's it's hard to really beat this this one when it comes to just pure regular straight up sherry dram. It's hard to find something other than the Boonal Heaven 12 and the Kilkaren 12. I'll agree. Those are right up with there. I, I can't find it. No, it's not. I'm not saying it's bitter at all there, Dustin. It's it's rich. It is rich. It's it's on the sweeter side. And I don't mind a sweet dream. And I prefer it, actually, because I'm more of a PX guy than an Oloroso guy. But... Uh, well, it depends. It depends on, on the make because there have been some PX ones that I'm not so into as much as Oloroso. So it, it's a tough, it's a tough balance. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I would love to see where these guys would be if this Billy character, which I don't, really, I don't even know who Billy is. I'm sure he's the uh, former master blender for uh, Glendronic. Um, but I would love to see what he did with the uh, 1215. Not to have it like old school, not be a proper 12 and be an actual 18 year old, but if it's a proper 12, to see what he uh, could come up with versus her, then that would be a, be a good one. Uh oh, here we go. The Glentronic is too bitter and too sharp. Hmm. Better and sharp compared to the McAllen 12. I'm going back. Now, I'll agree with you. The McAllen 12 is, is, I hate to use the word smoother, but it is a more refined taste. Oh, man. What I'll say, Dustin, is I agree with. I'm not sure if I would say bitter or sh uh, sharp might be the better word. I think it's more sulfuric. I think there's more sulfuric tones to this, but I think there's just more sherry involved with it. I don't know. I mean, I have to go back and take a, another look. I, I, I haven't had a McKellen 12 in a while, I'll be honest with you, Dustin. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to try to talk malt into doing a McKellen 12 at some point. And I'll try to save some of this and do like a side shootout and see what I like better, just just out of curiosity. Glenolicky 12 PX is nice as the uh, regular 12. Nice, it's 46%, but not as much depth. I see. I like the 12 uh, PX a lot, but PX is one of those things that really is is a very dividing type of sherry. Since I love a sweet dram, PX doesn't really throw me off too much, but um, I can tell why 
they're not really into that. Uh, yeah, it's funny that one of the first Scotch drams I ever tried was a smoky grouse and the naked grouse. And um, I started with the naked grouse, went to the smoky grouse. Those to me were, when you get to the more, it had a bit of like a saccharine kind of feel, like a artificial aspartame kind of, of taste to it. I'm not a big fan of the uh, grouse series and I'm not knocking it. It, it, it could be a very well good, you know, blended whiskey and that, and that's fine. But for me, I, I just was a little too artificial tasting for me on the smoky slash naked grouse um, from what I remember. Uh, Glendronic 15, 15 bucks more. Is that a five star? And that's the thing. It, when I'm talking about what you have to remember, Dustin, when I'm rating a whiskey, whether it's an AS, 12 year, 15, 21, 30, 40, 50. Now, I've tasted 50 year old whiskey, believe it or not. Um, to me, the years doesn't equate to the stars. I've had some. The, the Benrack 21 was not a four a four star whiskey. It was a three point like five to two, uh, three point seven five at the most whiskey. To me, this is a lot better than that Benrack 21. That's just me. I, I like the taste of this better. The roundness, the the bourbon, the slash the uh, PX and the Laroso, the balance. There's a lot of the mouth coat. There's a lot of factors to me that come along with this. So that's why even though it's a, I might like the revival less than the 12. I, it's been a long time since I've had the revival. I had an expo a couple of years ago and it was the second version. It wasn't the first version. It was the Rachel Berry version. I thought it was okay. I probably would have been something similar to this. I don't think it was much better than this original 12, to be honest with you, just going by like pure memory. It's been a while since I've had it, but Billy Walker was the master blender. Okay. Oh, we're not at Glen Ellicky. No wonder Glen Ellicky is so damn good. Okay. Well, that makes a lot of sense there. <laughs> Anyone had this small print on the back of the Lefroy care? Just, uh, I'm sorry, the Lefroy 10 cast strength where it's just adding twice as much water to the, huh? That is scary. Let me see if I see that on this. I'll be right back. Sorry about that. I just wanted to grab a grab it and take a quick look if I see about the water. Yeah, we recommend that you add twice as much water as whiskey to fully appreciate the taste characteristics of original cast strength Lafroy whiskey at cast strength may overpower the palate, but adding water will release rich aroma of peat smoke with some sweetness and strong hints of the sea. This is BS. Don't do that. <laughs> I would say adding a couple of drops, drops is the word we're looking for here, not buckets, not spoonfuls, not anything outrageous, just a drop of whiskey, I'm telling you, would be a big difference. What if Glendronic still peed at 5 to 10 ppm? I don't think the machine installed to burn some of the mash as good as it Yeah, I would love a, a little slight peated edge to the Glendronic. Uh, I would prefer the, the 5 to 10 ppm, in, in my opinion. Port a black label, Springbank 12. Oh, cast strength, the one I've got. Oh, it's in the other room. I do have the one, Steven. That one is awesome, man. It's black label. It's glorious. Oh, I gotta. I wish I had some more. I already drank the whole thing, but uh, I kept the bottle. <laughs> That's how good it was. Yeah, I don't mind adding a drop or two of water, but twice as much is crazy. That's just nuts. I'm sorry. I've seen that, but would not recommend it. Yeah, that's just, uh, yeah, greed or a few drops. I'm with you guys. That's just too crazy. The Mechanic 12 is too sulfury, in my humble opinion. It's not as good as it used to be. The Glendronic 12 is more complexity and richness. I'm the same way with you there, everyone. I agree. I'm sure there's some people in here that don't agree, but that's okay. It's all subjective. 
the 2010. As soon as I said that, here we go. The 12 is thin and sharp and bitter and no very, and no very sherry. It goes have a nice chocolate. Well, I do get a little chocolate in there, DHS, uh, Dustin, but uh, I get a lot of nice ruby red fruit. I mean, I got raspberries and currants and strawberries and berries out the ass. I'm not sure what else you're looking for there. Jordan Naked Grouse. Yeah, I just, I, it was a little too, a little too, I don't mind sweetness, but the sweetness in it was a little too, not as, I don't know what to, how to say it. I don't want to say fake, but it was a little too cloyingly diet tasting to me. I don't know what it is. Yeah, the, t the tin could take some water, but not that much. That's for sure. Never had the naked grouse for a trooper. It's a blend of single malt, but the famous are not. Oh, okay. A blended single malt, but the famous are not. I've had the famous and the smoky. I don't know if I've ever had the naked grouse. i got to look at that and see if I've had the naked one. I don't think I've had the naked one. The famous slash smoky one I think I've had. I'll have to go back and take a look at that. Um, the big thing about Billy Walker is that he's an investor in distilleries and trying to make them profitable for acquisition. I like that, man. That's the way to do it. Invest in what you believe in. Think across as a single malt. And it's rare to have that much sherry in a young and AS, but it's not bad. Well, that's a good to know. I have not, I'm going to have to take another look at the Naked Grouse because I think the Smoky slash uh, Famous were the ones I had. And this was like really early on in my scotch, not scotch journey, I should say. And uh, was not a big fan of those, but the Naked Grouse might be uh, one to look at because I like single and I like rare and I like sherry. <laughs> so those three things are good. So is the Glen Trotting 15 not way better than the 12 to you? Not the not to what I remember. I don't. I, from what I remember, having the 15 revival at a and this is an expo. So expos are tough to really judge a whiskey truly. And this is after the fact. I mean, I wouldn't have paid three hundred dollars to get in the place if if now knowing what I know now. I've went to a couple of expos before, and I went. I'll never do another one, but. Uh, at the time, it was good. It was about the same. It wasn't like, you know, blow my mind, four and a half or four point seven five. It was still around a four. It wasn't like you know, it was it was good, but it wasn't like you know, crazy. He thought it was heavenly. I mean that that's that's great, but I, I don't think there was a huge difference between the two. I like the naked but not the famous. Okay, I'll have to try the naked one and see. The new 15 is freaking awesome right to the 12. That's the thing. I've, this is, keep in mind, guys, this has been three years ago since I've had the 15. I, you know, it, I'll have to reapproach it because it's, it's been one of those things where it was a, it was a, tried it and then a year goes by, you get a chance to try the 15. This is three years ago. Try it, and at an expo, it's really, really tough to judge a whiskey. So I'm going to get my own bottle of 15 and see what I think about it. Because I, I, I can tell you guys love the 15 compared to the... Uh, but keep in mind, are we talking classic 15 revival or new 15 revival? That's a huge difference. Huge difference. Added that language to the back of the 19 carriages. Also, the Fino. Oh, that's crazy, man. I can't go 18, but again, I don't like PX as much. He's probably talking about the... You know, I'm not sure if he's on the Glenelaki. I'm sorry, the Glendronic or the uh, Gelaki on that one. Traditionally peated. I have had the peated cask. I think it was the 7 cast strength uh, peated cask. Controlling seven, it was okay. It wasn't. It wasn't. Um, it wasn't as good as I hoped it would be. It took a long time to open up. We'll put it that way. E one fifty. Okay, I don't mind it if as long as it's you know, different bottle with a clear short bottle, very small label. I'll look out for the naked grouse and see what I think about that one. Okay, finish my work so I can type coherently now. Okay. <laughs> 
I thought you were just enjoying your whiskey, brother. Yeah, me too. I thought he was just enjoying a, a lot of whiskey. Thanks, Meister French, for stopping by. I'm trying to catch up here. I'm, I know I'm way behind. I think Nicky Grouse is similar to the Abana. Every batch differs. Okay. That's good to know, at least. Don't forget to talk to Steve A. on the whisk cord to get chat room and announcements. Okay. I will try to uh, get in touch with him on the side to see if... Uh, if he'll help out a little bit, but the price is pretty good. I know the typing was bad the last time I was live with Telex, but that was talking like that too. <laughs> Haven't drank in days. Uh, best part about the letter whiskey rankings is that you can always add letters into. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's the thing guys. Like I'm not saying that the, the 15 is not, I mean, the 15 might be a lot better you got to keep in mind, I haven't had this in three years. I mean, it's been a, it's been a long time. So, yes, I I do enjoy this one. I'm, I'm not going to say I don't. Do I enjoy the, the 15 a lot more? Well, we'll see. I'll, I'll, I'll get a new bottle of it and see if um, if it, you know, tickles the ivories a little bit and if it's better. I mean, there are some 12 and 15 and 12. 18 year old whiskeys that are five stars out of five. I mean, I'm sure that exists. You know, it doesn't have to be ancient to be great. It can be younger and be great. I mean, you know, what might happen is I might give this a four. The 15, I might give a 4.5 out of five if I think it's that much better. But I'll be honest, if I have it and if I think it's about the same and I don't get like the crazy difference, then I'll tell you. But if I try it again, if I think it's a lot better, I will definitely save some of this to compare it to. And that's, that's, that's part of the hard thing about this. If you don't have the old juice to go against the new juice to really compare it to, it's really tough to say if it's good or, or you know, if it's better or worse or the same as what you've had before. So I will definitely save a good chunk of this on the side to compare it to, to see if it's uh, any count. Let's see. Sorry. All right. Find the uh, 15. It's the best 15 on the market by far. Wow. It's good for the price. Single small sherry bomb for 40 bucks. Wow. That sounds great. Okay. I will definitely get myself a bottle because this was very quick in passing. It's really hard to judge the new 15. Steven. We we both need to get a bottle of this 15, it sounds like. If Dustin is willing to say, I need to get a bottle of this, and knowing how hardcore he is on every whiskey bottle he touches, I will definitely get a bottle of that. There's a bit of, this, of spice that's not epic on the new 15, but what a finish. Okay. I love finish, so I'm, I'm, I'll, 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 that's one thing that is not the best on this. This is why it wasn't a, a higher score. Was the finish was good, but it wasn't like blow my mind great on this one. So keep that in mind on that one. Hold on, sorry. Uh, never ordered the uh, 15 online because I always expect it to come in locally one day. Yeah. The, the local thing on the 15 will happen. I've noticed it, it come and go. I'll have to hunt for the Glen Jordan. It's hard to find. Yeah. We'll all try to try to find that one. It seems like everyone thinks it's really tough. Check out my review of the 15. I will Dustin. I, I definitely will. Cause I mean, Dustin is one of the most like Dustin is, is one of the most critical people I've noticed on whiskey. I mean, he is critical. I mean, he'll give it a, even if it's 17 years old and you think it might be decent, he'll give it a two out of five. No joke. Uh, I, I don't think it's a problem. I think it's a good thing. And I, I, I commend him for that. So I'll, uh, I'll definitely take a look at that. Cause if you think it's that good, and I, yeah, I, I do trust him. So I'll definitely take a look. Or did a comparison of the, the 15 about a year ago. His interview with Willie Barker is epic. You need to watch them. And me too. The 15 is hard to get. It sells out quickly. Yeah, it does. And I will, um, I do know a place that has it, so I will try to jump all over that. I haven't seen a 15 in Hawaii yet. Oh, man, that's rough. That's rough on that. I know you're in Hawaii, man. You're lucky. I'd love to go to Hawaii. Can I come visit? 
on? Can I, if I bring you some really good drams, can I come visit for like just one or two days? <laughs> That'd be awesome, man. <laughs> 85 ish for these. You can't go wrong at that price. Yeah, that's a great price. I don't know if I can find it that cheap here, but I will try. See, that's the weird thing about Glendronic here in Maryland. It's like the, the 15 is like 100 bucks. So you, you got to keep that in mind. The Glendronic is not cheap here. <laughs> It's a very, very, very high. Not bad, yeah. I hope he says yes, because the 15 Glen Scotia is where it's at, man. I've had three bottles. Two are great. One is interesting. I wonder if he's talking about the, oh, and the 15 is awesome. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I oh, I appreciate it, man. I'll have to keep on that someday if I ever get out that way. The uh, the 15 on the uh, Glen Scotia, I'll agree, is one of the best whiskeys I've had on the 15-year-olds that I can remember in quite a while, for the especially for the price point. For 15-year-old, for like, I think you still get it for like 70 bucks. Holy shit, is that good? Glen Scotia 15, it definitely get your hands on it. The, um, oddly, the 15 was $100 when we first got it. Then it came back to 85 or 90 Wow, you're lucky, man, because here it's like crazy prices. It's good at a value on the market. Yeah, I agree. That's the Glen Scotia. Thankfully, Dustin and I will agree on that one. Is our is, that that's our our joint dram. If we ever meet up, man, sometime we'll have to get each other a Glen Scotia fifteen just for fun, because that one is that one's tight. I, I I cannot say anything really negative about that one. And for the price point, oh my god, it's crazy good. But. Uh, I wish I had a, a an old 12 to compare this to so badly. A Billy uh, Walker version would be tight. But maybe someday, if anyone's got any really old 12, and, and if you don't have to say it here because I know how tough it is to find. But if, if you have any old, old 12 on the side you're, you're willing to part with, let me know, and I'll save this. Maybe do even do a shootout with it to see what if I, if I notice a huge difference between the Billy Walker version and the uh, Rachel Berry version. I'm sure there is, because I'll tell you what, she, <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's, that's cool. I mean, I'm, I'm just going by the Ben Ryak, I was surprised at how the 21 did not wow me as much as the Aaron 21, the new Aaron 21. That one is like night and day difference. Like the Aaron 21, the new version is up here and the, the Ben Reich 21 is, is, is kind of down here. It's still good. 3.75 versus, you know, 4.25 is a, is a bit of a difference, but um, I don't know, man. I guess it's really, really hard to fuck up a 12 year old whiskey. <laughs> that's, that's like, you know, pretty good. Just saying, Whiskey Friend was live for like four to five hours before he came here. I think he was off on that info. No, I know how it goes, man. I know, I know how uh, some of the stuff is. You have to take it with a grain of salt. 12 cast strength, 56.2, 70 for 30. Sherry Bourbon might be one of the top. Oh, yeah, it, it definitely is. I mean, if the only 12-year-old cast strength releases that I would tell people they have to get and I mean have to get hold a gun to their head so you better get this talking to you is the uh, Springbank 12 and the Log of One 12 those two are quintessential drams for anyone I would say that likes scotch you had the newer 12 57.1 or the 57.3 best bourbon bias 12 cast strength I've had Hmm. Yeah, this one, the one I, I had to, I, I can't dig it up now because it's in the closet way back in the other room back there. But the one I had was the Black Bottle uh, 12 uh, cast strength. Man, that is glorious. Yeah. That one's really, 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 really good. What is your favorite 15 year old? Good question, man. The Glentronic, the Glen Scotia. The Tamdu, the Red Breast, or the Balvany, ooh, 15 single barrel. Oh, man. Oh. 
Wow. Okay. Now, if I had to take a guess, I'm going to guess what Dustin's going to say. Don't say anything yet, Dustin, on this. Don't say anything yet, Stephen. Don't say anything yet, guys, on this on this question. I'm going to guess what you guys would say. Out of the Glendronic, the Glen Scotia, the Tamdu, the Springbank, the Redbreast, Balvany, or anything else even, I would say they would they were singing high praises of this Glendronic 15. I've had the uh, Glen Scotia 15, the Tamdu 15, the Springbank 15, the Redbreast 15, and I've had the glorious Balvany 15 single barrel, man. Oh my God, you were going to go there. All right, well, the Glendronic's good. Um, I've heard the Glen Scotia 15 is phenomenal. The Tendu 15 is nothing to sneeze at. And I've had, I, I have a bottle actually nearby. I really like that one that I'll, 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 I'll revisit uh, here very soon. Um, Springbank 15 is is decent but i have to say out of all those my personal favorite minus the glendronic 15 because i haven't given it it's just do uh via the uh, comments but i'm gonna say the i'm thinking the balvany 15 single barrel man is where it's at on this one oh I love the Glen Scotia 15, though, too. The Tam D 15 is good. I don't know if it's as good as some of these other ones. The Redbreast 15 is pretty decent. The Springbank 15 is okay. I don't like it as much as the 12-year-old. The Springbank 12 cast strength I like better than the 15. So I'm going to go with the... Um, man. If you had a gun to my head and made me pick... Minus the Glendronic 15, which I'm going to try at a later date. I might change it, but at this point, minus the Glendronic, the Balvenie single barrel 15 is where it's at, man. This is a black label. That's majority charity. Yeah. It'll end up with a shelf of... Oh, wow. $200, though? That's too high. 100 bucks. 110 110 at the most. There's no way I would go 200 on that, but I don't know. Maybe I'll change my mind in the future. <laughs> you never know. All right, guys. Well, I better shut this off before it gets too crazy. And i uh, got to work tomorrow, unfortunately. But this is the best question, I think, of the night, man. What is your favorite 15? I, re I really think it's a tough one. Three cheers from the Balvenie 15 carbon cask. I, I was with you there, Santa Cruz, and on that one. Dusty first fill of Sherry Balvenie's my choice. But they're single cask, and I want to certainly I have love and few bottles of great casks over all row. So, yeah, I love the Balvenie 15 is my, my go-to. The Glendronic, Balvenie, Tamdu, etc. With the 15 is Glendronic, Balvenie. Which one? <laughs> you said all of them. But the single, the Springbank 15, it really depends on the batch. Okay. As I might go higher. So you, I think it's in this order. The the Glendronic, then the single cast from Balvenie, then the Tamdu, then the Glen Scotia, then the Springbank, then the Red Brass. So I, I agree with that. That's a really good, I think, one after another, rank of best to the worst. I have to speak to the Glendronic when I try it, but if he's with me on the Balvany single cast being up there, then I, I definitely agree that Tamdu is good. Maybe slightly, slightly, I mean very slightly better than the Glen Scotia in the Springbank, but the Redbreast is probably the least favorite of those. For less than two, 150, yeah. 150 is probably where I would draw the line on that. Yeah, 110 is where I would go on that. Spring Bank 15 for molasses there. That was in order, yeah. That makes sense to me, man. I think you're good with that. Hell, they're all good. That's true. But I think I think Dustin's got the best um, classification and order that I would agree with. I have to, to try the Glendronic again just to make sure, but Glendronic, Balvenie, single cast, Tamdu, Glen Scotia, 
uh, Spring Bank and then Red Breast. That's solid, man. I think you, I think you nailed it. Good price for uh, any twelve strength cast strength. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if if you don't go above, I mean, that's a tough thing. If it's a new release, one to one ten should be your threshold. If it's one of those Lagavulin ones that are released and it's been like six seven years since they've been doing it, um, then one forty ish, one fifty should be your cutoff. Um, for things that are really specialized though, that's when you kind of have to be like, well, is it worth, you know, looking for that one year, one specialty bottle that gives me that, that taste, um, kind of like that Port Charlotte that he pulled out earlier, man, that I'll have to say that's a phenomenal whiskey guys. If, if, for those who stuck around, it's no joke. It's, it's not a, it's not, you know, the most refined, 18 year old type whiskey I've ever had by by far no but if you're looking for a really nice high ABV cast strength um, red wine cask influence but still had the bourbon cask influence there that felt like a true eight year old not too young not too you know anything I, I think it was solid I'm thinking 4.5 is not too much for that whiskey, even at that age. Yes, could it be better with more age? Yes, that's where the 4.75, 4, you know, 5.0 might come into play. But for what it is at eight years old, and with all the pee and all the balance and all the cask influence and maturity and all that, I mean, I think that it did a damn good job for that one. If it's a bottle you love, buy it. I bought it. Two 12 year Castor Burgundy Woods Spring Banks from UK at 12. Yeah. 12 year Burgundy Wood Cat. Oh, man. That sounds specialty there. All those 700 milliliters. Yeah. That's that's the thing. I feel your pain, Dustin, with that because I've noticed I'm, I'm ordering a lot more stuff overseas lately for price. But what I fail to remember is that 50 milliliter difference and 50 milliliters is not a whole whole lot but it is you know a bit <laughs> so it does pay to look local and, and and i did screw myself on the carriage spy i didn't realize my local store had it and i went overseas and got it and i could have saved a lot of money a lot of money on the carriages uh, if I waited and got it local compared to overseas. So I don't hate myself for doing it, but it's a lesson learned. Always look local first. If you can find it local first, that's the way to do it. Excuse me. If you look all over local first and can't find it anywhere, and I'm talking like tri-state area, and you don't, you know, want to fight the people to get into the place and have a mask and all that. I understand. That's why I try to order, like, order delivery. There's a place down the road, thankfully, that will deliver stuff delivery. The sad thing is they don't have any selection. I mean, I'm lucky to get the Glendronic 12. Uh, maybe the Balvany, you know, 12 single, single barrel might be, like, the most rare thing I get from those guys. But when it comes to more higher stuff, there is a place that is sort of local. I do have to drive a half hour to get to, but they have a great selection and they will do curbside delivery with mask you know, service. And I love these guys. Petite Sellers in Maryland are my, is my favorite go-to. Um, I'll get it from them before I get it from anywhere else. But if they don't have it, that's when I might flip it over to the... Uh, the whiskey ordering outside the UK kind of thing. But I take those 700s over to Mike's house when we share, man, you notice the bottle fill drop like crazy. Yeah. That is uh, the scary, sad thing. Dustin, the good thing in a couple of years, we'll look back and say what a great deal. Yeah. I hope these tariffs in too, man. That's, that's the scary thing. I don't think I even cared about election board to, to my own this coming one. Oh no let's not even go there man 
not going there <laughs> on the whole election thing. Oh, man. Tariffs are killing about I agree with you there. I'm not a fan of the tariffs. I'm not going to get into politics. That's where I draw the line. But no, I know I know where you guys are coming from with that. I can't dispute that because it's coming on my, my wallet too. And I'm, I'm doing this too much. I don't like doing that. <laughs> well, thanks so much for stopping by, guys. It's been a great time. I have to work tomorrow, so I have to cut it off now before it gets any crazier. But uh, it's always fun hanging out with you guys. I hope you like the new you know entry-level thing first, high-end shit afterward. And uh, we'll see where it goes. I think next week we'll have the Carriages 2020. I'm looking really forward to uh, doing that one with Malt Muser. And also the uh, Lafroiga 12-year-old single cast 46%. High growth will be interesting. I do have the sample here. I haven't opened it yet. I haven't like snuck a peek or anything. Hopefully it's good. I'm kind of nervous, but we'll see what we get. Thanks a lot, Stephen, for the uh, format uh, blessing. I appreciate it. It's hard to please everybody. You know how it goes. But I think this will be good for, for the long haul. And it's good for us, even us veterans, to go back and look at a whiskey to see what we think of it. You know, good, bad. Is it as good? Is it worse? Is it ugly? That kind of thing. Aloha, Juan. I, I really appreciate you stopping by, and I'll, I will definitely go out to Hawaii at some point. I'm telling you, <laughs> I have. I'm also a radio operator, and I want to operate from some of the parks you guys have out there. It'll be fun. That's a whole other story, but uh, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> as long as there's no more Game of Thrones bottle. <laughs> done with the game of thrones bottles man i just wanted to i started it and I, i'm a completist and i felt like i had to complete the series before i moved on but i am thankful to move on because there are a couple gems i mean the, the lock of one and the clean leash were really good i thought the talisker and the dalany were were decent as well as the Klein Leash, but, you know, some of the other stuff. That Morlock was surprising, man, because I swear to God, the first time I tried it, I thought it was a lot better than, you know, uh, it, it, it was it was rough after oxidation. It was not as good. I don't think you, I don't think you sh should just stick with this for the long haul. I'm not sure what quite that means. Oh, I came a I got the Mortlock for 80 recently. Wow. The Mortlock uh, 15 Game of Thrones bottle? He said he loved it. I don't know if that's true or not, but was that the one you're talking about? The 15? Now, this is the thing, Dustin, and, and, and Stephen will agree with me on this one. If, you, if this is the one that you got, the Mortlock 15 Game of Thrones shit, you got to drink that shit fast because the oxidation is not its friend. Because I, I swear to God, as soon as I poured it, and I sampled it, and I loved it. I sent it out to Stephen, and we all had like a really good sit down. Let's go over the whiskey, and it was one of the four that I sent. It was not as good as it was before. I don't know why, other than oxidation of why. But man, thanks so much, Santa, for the uh, feedback. I really appreciate it. But I'm I'm curious to see if it was the uh, if it was that one. Yeah, I mean eighty dollars. That's awesome for that, right? I mean, I mean it was it was cheaper than what I found it for, but I mean for what it is, yeah. Anytime, man. That's what I, that's why I do it. I drink it in two weeks. There you go. That's that's why I, this is why it's it pays off. Even if you don't agree with me, Dustin, you have to admit I might have good advice on the side sometimes. It was fun, but I wouldn't buy it based on Jason's sample. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it was uh, on the format. I like this, but the long haul, I don't know. We'll get through it in a few months. Got to mix it up. Yeah, I mean that's the I, I change this shit all the time, so you know how it goes. I'm I'm trying to make it where we're basically not just doing it for the ultra whiskey connoisseurs like you guys but we're also doing it for you know some of the guys on the side it's it's, it's a tough one you bought a second 
wow, the Mortlock maybe let it. If you let it oxidize, dude, I, I have a f bad feeling that you're going to not be as impressed. Even for 80, you're going to be like, wow, what the hell? Because it was a big difference. It really was. I won't touch any of those. Clothes. I'm not blaming you. Other than I think you really should. I mean, the Log of Only 9 is actually really good. It, it's a hell of a lot better than the 8, which is their core, you know, it's right down here, the 8. Uh, I, it's a hell of a lot better than the 10-year-old Travel Retail. The 9 is no joke. That is the best bottle of the series. If I had to, if, you, if, if someone asked me what's the best bottle of the series, it's definitely the nine um out of the whole thing in second place might be the klein leash but that's where i would probably draw the line and say all the other ones are hit and miss i like the open i like the dalmany i like the talisker even to a point but you know it's not worth crazy prizes some are super cheap now i get the log of only nine yeah i agree with dustin I thought the first was a 120 bottle, so it's okay. Yeah. $45 there? Wow, man. That's crazy. It was like 80 to 90 here when I got it. And it was still worth like, I don't know if it's worth 90, but I, I'd give it maybe worth 70 to 80 ish, somewhere around that area, maybe. I mean, it's, is it when it, when it comes to specialty, it's really tough to really, I don't know. I flipped those two for me, Telex and the Klein Leash. I want another of, and it's the only one I haven't seen more of. Yeah. Good point. Cast strength makes a big difference with this stuff. I would get the Log of One Nine for under 50. Oh, man. I don't know where you guys are finding this 45 and $50 stuff, but if I found it for that, I would buy a couple bottles just to have it. We just got more of the. Oh, wow. The weird thing about it around here is that shit sold like hotcakes. I, I, I haven't been at the the places in a while, though, because of this COVID nightmare. But um, it'll be interesting to see if I go out in the in last, uh, last two to three weeks, if I can find some of those Game of Thrones bottles for really cheap, I would definitely pick up the Lagavulin and the Klein Leash. I would draw the line there for most people. If you don't mind a bit of smoke slash um, sweetness, the Oban and the uh, Talisker are close behind. After that, I would just skip it because the Cardu, no. The Glendulin, no. The Rolotnagar, no. Even the Mortlock after oxidation, man, uh, I don't know. Yeah, it is the highest of the uh, of the series. Well, I know I said it like 10 minutes ago, but I better cut this off. Man. <laughs> Thanks so much for hanging out, guys. We could talk whiskey all freaking night, I know. Oh, man, you guys are going crazy. It's okay, Steven. I know how it goes. It's, it's one of those things where you try to, like, push it aside for like run-of-the-mill people that are just looking for a whiskey to try that i look at those the reason why i did those honestly was because those are the bottles that people that are not in the scotch are going to try first just because it's some from series some series they know game of thrones was so big a couple of years ago that i mean for people that were thinking about getting the scotch that was like the best option for them to try i just wish that that diageo did a better job with the craft of the whiskey and put some better offerings because to have two that i would recommend to people out of the three four five six seven eight you know nine what is it nine one two three four five six seven eight nine different whiskeys for only two to be heavily recommended that's pretty bad and i and maybe two on the side is iffy recommendations and all the rest being kind of like, eh, I mean, that goes to show it's just, you know, it's just not as, it's not as good. Peter North. Good to see you, man. Old, old film star. <laughs> I know who Peter North is. Dude. That's funny. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> we used to dream that dog 2020 on the porn set. That's hilarious, man. Awesome stream tonight. I appreciate it, man. Whiskey the six approved. All right. Oh, man. Well, you recommended the two bottles that were over 60 retail. Most were cheap. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, good to see you, man. Hopefully you come by again. We'll be doing this every Tuesday. On the side, I might throw a surprise review in there on the side if I get a chance to. I do have a really good set from Stephen's friend, Kenny, of uh, four really good drams that are specialty drams. I'll be doing this side. I got to get with Kenny and see when it would be a good day for him. I missed him. He told me that it would be coming up soon. And I, I haven't had a good uh, connection, but we'll see if I can get um, uh, Kenny on the show, maybe on a side show to do a few uh, tastings to see what he, hopefully he still has some. He hasn't like sipped through the bottle yet. And uh, maybe I can talk him on to, you know, doing a, a live review with me. We'll see. Maybe even Steven can join in if he's got any of these. I'll run about you, Steven, on the side to see if you already have some of these that, that Kenny sent. If not, either way, we'll have a good, you know, good time, good fun looking over them. So, Sancho of for now, guys. I really appreciate it. Thumbs up before you go if you haven't already. Please subscribe if you haven't. It, it does help me know what's going well what's not so i really appreciate it slanchava for now